Okay. Good assignment. What assignment? Bess and I are flying to New Orleans for a long weekend of She's fabulous music, it. sightseeing, and food. Okay, so I'm also going to visit Ned's friend, Henry Bollet, but only as a favor to Ned. Apparently, Henry's uncle just died, and he had to go down there for a couple of weeks. Ned says Henry's a nice guy, but kind of a loner who might appreciate a little company. So, the first thing I'll do is leave Bess at our hotel in the French Quarter and take a cab out to the mansion where Henry's staying. Ned called him and said I'd be coming. But once that's done, it'll be lazy les bon temps for les. <laughs> the only bad news is the weather's Let not the good times to be that roll. great this weekend. But what's a little stormy weather when you're in the heart of the Big Easy, right? Right. Laissez les bon temps rouler. Well, let's have a look. Oh, warning. What? Best play this game in a dark room. If it's daytime, draw the shades. What? That's new. Is this. Ooh! Is it spooky? Spooky Nancy? I didn't know that. Oh. Hi. Mojamashimasu. Anybody here? Gomen kudasai. Footsteps. Asiato. Why do I feel like we're going to get jump scared? Hi, the door was open. Who the heck are you? What is that outfit? He's gonna be gone. Ah! Oh! Huh? Uh, excuse me? Hello. Hey, drink this. What? What is it? Kale Something juice. Make you feel <laughs> drink it. Just a couple sips. That legit looks like kale juice. Okay. Uh, okay. That's it. No offense, but. Yuck. Kale Don't juice. Drink Definitely kale juice. Concoctions. Then I really will have to take her to the emergency room. You just go back to your phone call and leave us be. Don't pay him any mind. Wait, gaslight? Where am I? There's You're no Henry house, dear, electric in the electricity. Library. He and I carried you in here after I found you unconscious in the foyer. Why is it so dark in here? The electricity went out. Lightning must have struck a transformer somewhere. I see. What happened? Can you remember? Well, the front door was open, so I walked in, and then I saw this, well, I saw a skeleton, and then he saw me, and then the light started flickering, and he threw something at me that exploded. The smoke must have made me pass out. You saw a skeleton? I'm sure it was just someone, you know, wearing a costume or something. I'm Nancy Drew, by the way. I came to see Henry. So we surmised. I'm Renee Amon. I'm Bruno. So Bonnet's we surmised. That is, I was. This skeleton that attacked you. Perhaps we should call the police. Oh, <gasps> spooky! No, room, no police. Things are complicated enough as it is. Henry's feeling a mite overwhelmed. Well, you are looking much better, so I'm going to get back to my plant potting. You need anything? I'll be outside in the garden. In the I garden, in them, the rain. Them on hold for five hours and see how they like it. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Oh. Okay. Ready for action. Let's see. What's in that juice? It's def I think it's kale juice. Kale juice is not that bad if you mix it right, but if you put like other things in it. Like cucumber, and maybe a bit of lemon. Oh, it's a, oh, it's a turny room. A turny turn. Nothing here. Nothing to read. There must be something to read. Ooh. Ooh. T teeth. Let's see if one of them stays. It's probably like a code we need to put in. Hmm. Oh, there's a lot. Okay, whatever that is. Hmm. 
You think someone's like a dentist or anything? That's why he's teeth? Miniature Modelers of America. First place. Miniatures. 1978-1991. Wait, why is this one roll? I just found a glass eye. Did Bruno Bollet wear one? Yep. Wore a glass eye for as long as I can remember. Had a whole collection of them. Like to wear a different color every day. What? Okay. 1982, 1985. He sure loved his models. I can barely see. This is so dark. Bridges to Nowhere. Genie Dover. Camel in the Needle's Eye. Cat's Eye. Cavities and their prevention. What? Daniel and the Moving Finger. Eye Candy. Finding Fish. Grinding fake eyes. Turn a blind eye. Librarian's tail. Limes and coconut. Okay. Whatever that is. So, Nancy. Nice to meet you. Ned sent you here to check up on me, huh? That is not what I thought you'd look like. <laughs> Whoa. He's kind of worried about you, that's all. Ned's a nice guy. I mean, I really don't know him that well, just from school. But when I mentioned that my only living relative just died, he was all like, Yeah? How you feeling, man? You doing okay? Wanna talk? Of course, I guess I do come across as a little needy sometimes. Hmm. Were you very close to your uncle? Great uncle. Great uncle Bruno, and no, I wasn't. My parents died in a car crash when I was eight. Since hmm. I had no other relatives, he took me in. Or should I say he shipped me out? Boarding school, summer camp, military school, college. <laughs> he may have looked after me, but he never spent any time with me. I didn't know him at all. I hear some resentment. Noted. What are you doing, if you don't mind my asking? Great Uncle Bruno named me executor of his estate. Which means I have to make sure all his bills are paid and debts taken care of so his assets can be distributed. Unfortunately, he couldn't have cared less about little things like keeping records or balancing checkbooks. Dealing with his creditors and their lawyers has been an absolute nightmare. So, thanks for stopping by, Nancy. And now you can report back to Ned that I'm fine and go enjoy New Orleans. No, I can't. Not until I know who that skeleton man was and what he was doing here and why he knocked me out like that. <laughs> Look, I can understand you're not wanting to call the police, but somebody should investigate. And since playing detective is kind of a hobby with me. No offense, but are you sure you didn't just pass out from the heat and humidity or something and dream that you saw the skeleton dude? I'm positive. Okay, look around all you want. But I should probably warn you, Uncle Bruno was into exotic pets. Ooh. Didn't believe in cages, so he gave him the run of the place. And mm. just because he's dead doesn't mean they are. So if oh. you're going to go poking around, be careful. Okay, I will probably die by snake bite or something. Okay. Anything here? No. Oh, I did not know it must be a shadow of something as I got is this like torn and everything? But it's a little tree. Wait, I can zoom in here, but there's nothing to look at yet. That might be a hint or something. Okay. This looks so cool. <laughs> Those pictures. I don't see anything. Oh, all the angles are so like, like shifted. Don't you think? Hmm. Okay. Okay. 
Oh yeah, didn't someone say last game we played that... Um, that Bruno was mentioned somewhere? So this is where we saw the guy. Why was he looking at this? Oh, oh! Memorial... Sleeping Meadow... Sorrow Park... Slumber Gardens... The Growing... Crowing Crits! 40 wings. That's a lot of wings. Oh! Uh okay. Hmm. Ooh. Nice art. We're missing a picture. Who was that? Hmm, footprint. Someone was doing some found like an imprint somewhere. Zeke's. What is that? I have no idea. <laughs> Picking up the weirdest things. Can you imagine Nancy Drew just walking through that was being like, Oh, a rock! I'll take it! You never know, it might be useful. Ooh! What is this? Hmm. Okay, uh, how do I reset? Ah. Oh, that's tricky. Can you move the block too? It does look movable, doesn't it? Yes. So... Oh, and that's one at a time. Oh, it just goes through. But how can I move anything here then? Oh, look at that. Hmm. Oh, so can this thing block one and then the block move the other thing? So then I can block both the beams. What do I want to do with the marbles though? Where do they need to end? Like if we get the marble to block this one, then we can move the block to the second one. But how do we make sure this marble stops here? Because we can't push it to the second place, right? Oh, we can! Oh! Oh, that makes things easier then. So I could... Oh wait, I should put it higher. I could do... This... There we go. Maybe... Um, I'm wondering if maybe I should put this one up one. And then I could push this one here, here, and here. But then I'm not sure if I can get this one out. I could get it out if I put this one up one. Second marble to block the second laser. Ah, right. And then I just put the take the block with me. Ooh. Let's see. How do I get this block through, though? I think here. Push it here, and then I can push it out, and then I can push it down.
This remind this these kind of puzzles always remind me of Legend of Zelda. Thank you. I will take the eyeball. Okay. First puzzle done. Cozy rain. What's this? Oh. Peter P. Larry Michael. Ezra. <gasps> Is it coffee? Oh my god. I didn't even think I would get coffee. Thank uh -huh. you. Playing Nancy Drew. You your mind? I'm Nancy'd up. Thanks, babe. You're the best. Coffee, mm -hmm. coffee, coffee. Bunch of names. Buried, memorial, plot. Cemetery, ledger. Very interesting room. Mm, front door, I don't see why I would want to go there right now. Ooh, God, what a dreadful looking room. Another eyeball? Okay, why is it so dark? Can we change the brightness anywhere? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. At least you guys can see what's going on. <laughs> you just have to tell me if I... This is like pitch black for me, so let me know if I miss anything. If you guys see something. God, it's so dark. I, I can't see! Why do I have a little arrow? Oh, oh it's just... A, I'm just exiting the screen, okay. Wait, I can turn right? Oh, it's the door. Anything spooky under the bed? No? There's gotta be something here, but... Maybe later. Um... Door rattles. Rattle, rattle, rattle. Okay, nothing upstairs. Uh, that was a door here. No, wait, that's where I came from. This one. Oh, cozy! Oh my god. Uh, how do I save? Is this the first time we have a different UI for this? Cozy. Wait, can I? Is there... Oh, hey! Nancy, welcome to my little lantern lit corner of the world. It's a little wet out here. I don't mind. No one should mind the rain. Without Coffee. it, the end of the world would come much too soon. Did you and Henry have a nice chat? <sighs> Did I detect a little animosity between you two back there? Henry's a very morose, very negative young morose? man. Very cunning, too. In fact, I'm fairly certain that he's been selling off Dr. Bolay's belongings on the sly. Oh. Won't all of Dr. Bolay's belongings go to Henry anyway? Absolutely not. According to Dr. Bolay's will, Henry is to get 30% of the estate. Oh. Dr. Bolay's physician, Gilbert Buford, gets 30%. Our Lady of Route 57 School of Dentistry and Cosmetology gets 30%. Who? And I am to receive 10%. Hmm. What was in that concoction you wanted me to drink after I got knocked out? Never you mind. It was just a little remedy I brewed up on the spot to help you feel better. Hmm. Have you ever seen this before? I found it by that scale model of the cemetery that's inside the house. It's a mystery to me. I suggest you ask Henry. He leaves things lying around all the time. 
I guess it figures I won't notice amid all the other clutter. But I do. I notice everything. How else may I be of service to you? One sec. I'm dealing with my kitty. Okay. Um... Why is there an empty frame in the gallery inside? That is a very good question. I first noticed the canvas was missing after the reception following Dr. Bolet's funeral. But as for why it was missing, I do not know. <laughs> um, okay, so someone took that. If you don't mind my asking, what's in that little pouch you wear around your neck? Things. Secret things. Secret things. Things that give you special <laughs> talents when special times demand them. People usually laugh when I say this, but this pouch is my connection to the energy that powers the universe. Oh. <laughs> well, oh. at least you didn't laugh. I mean, if it's something that helps you out, then I don't see why it doesn't harm anyone, so... Uh, okay. If you don't like Henry that much, how come you're still here? I'm here because Dr. Bolet paid me in advance, and I always fulfill my obligations. Okay. I'd better get going. One more thing. I, too, have seen the skeleton man. Oh! After Dr. Bolet passed that night, I saw him in the hallway. He was there, then he was gone. So you best be careful, Nancy Drew, because if it was Mr. Death, and I truly think it was, he's come back. <laughs> Mr. Death? He's come back. Whoa, a bone shovel? That's hardcore. I guess we can take the shovel maybe later if we need it. Uh, 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 ah! What is this? Should keep you guys quiet for a while. Um. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> that just happened. <gasps> oh God. Oh, that's scary. No, thank you. What the fuck? That's terrifying. Wait, there was something there. Scary music. Um, what do I need? I don't see anything. Maybe it's for later. <laughs> Hi, baby. He's so cute. Yeah. So cuddly. Oh, such a cuddly baby. Yeah. What's that? I guess it's for later. Oh, what are those? Whoa. Uh. What does that do? Well, I can't unpush it, so. God, she must be drenched by now. Wait, this opens too? Oh my god. Why are there so many places we can go to? Whoa. What is this? I feel like we're like in the Resident Evil mansion or something. I can't do... Oh, I can do something here. Hmm. Should we just go out? Oh, was there a wheelbarrow there? Oh, another thing. I thought I saw it, but I can't really... Oh! Is that us? 
Oh. Oh, okay, never mind. That seems like something, something. Oh! Hey, 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 hey! Look, those rocks. Oh, they were steps! So I could get this thing. Oh, that's cool. Should we just wander out or do you think we can get lost? Rainy. Hmm. Oi. What a snuggly kitty. Oi, oi, oi. Do we have a task list? Okay. All done. All done. Okay. Take a really good look around the room where I saw the scout man trying to figure out what it was doing. Jack. There. Figure out what's up with those fake books. Grandfather clock in the hallway does more than keep time. Ask Henry what's up with the scale model. Okay. See if anyone knows why one of the picture frames is empty. Figure out the significance of that tracing I found. Check out what's left of the receipt I found in the fireplace. Hmm. Call Bess. Oh. Play that game in the great room. Check. That's done. Explore the little room that's off the Did landing. That. Explore every inch of the garden, even though it is pretty darn crazy. Still have to do that. Okay, maybe we should make a call. Or maybe, no wait, let's talk to the dude first. Yes? Is your great uncle's estate worth very much? I have no idea, nor will I until I get all his affairs settled. He was a dentist for most of his life, so he must have had some money squirreled away. As you can tell, he was darn good at squirreling away junk. Have you had any of his things appraised? Somebody from a curio shop came in and took a quick look around, but it wasn't anything formal. Renee says she noticed the canvas for one of the paintings in the gallery was missing shortly after Bruno died. So she says. All I know for sure is that it's gone. It was of my parents. I think it was painted in the garden out back. Renee doesn't like me. Wouldn't surprise me if she took it out of spite. Hmm. So, so it was painted in the garden out back. Maybe there's like a clue on it and that's why someone took it. I found this scrap of paper in the fireplace. Do you know anything about it? No. You always go digging around in people's fireplaces? Just looking for something that might tell me who that skeleton man was. Ah. Anything else? Why is there a model of a cemetery in the other room? Because great uncle Bruno used to oversee the cemetery next door made that scale model so he could keep track of where everything, or should I say, every one, was. Hmm. Crafted all those miniature crypts himself. And people think I'm weird. Do you know what this is? I found it in the other room. Looks to me like some kind of tracing. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that maybe my skeleton man left it behind. Well, I sure don't know anything about it. Anything else? I'll check back with you later. Groovy. Groovy. <laughs> Uh, maybe I can't make calls in the room. Yeah. Hello? Bess, hi, it's me. Hey, Nance. I just got back from shopping, which I am happy to report is fantastic here. So, what's going on with you? A lot. Hey. A lot is in a whole bunch of fun stuff. Let me start by telling you what happened when I arrived at Henry's house. I walked up to the front door and discovered it was open. So I walked in. Hmm. You were oh. knocked out by a skeleton wearing a red ascot? Someone dressed as a skeleton wearing oh. a red ascot. Are we playing as best? Although the housekeeper here thinks it really was a skeleton, Mr. Death. But then she's a little strange. You think it was a burglar? I'm not sure. I caught him or her sneaking around this scale model of a cemetery. And later I found a tracing of something right by it. So if I could just figure out what it's a tracing of 
And what, if anything, it has to do with that model cemetery, I might be able to figure out who Skeleton Man is. I know that tone of voice. You're not leaving there until you've done just that, are you? Oh, I also found some kind of receipt in the fireplace that may or may not be a clue. What's it a receipt for? That's what I need to find out. See, it's half burned up. All I can read is the receipt number and the name of the place it's from. Zeke's. Zeke's? You gotta be kidding me. Why? What do you mean? I mean, you went I'm shopping sitting there? here on our balcony in the first oh, yeah. quarter looking down at a place across the street called Zeke's. That's great. So go over there and ask whoever's behind the counter what receipt number 21-3872 is for. <laughs> you... You want me to snoop? I wouldn't call it snooping. Uh-uh, forget it. Not gonna do it. Beth. I'm not good at that sneaking around stuff, Nancy. I get nervous, my tongue gets all knotted up, my <laughs> palms sweat to say nothing of my armpits. Beth. <laughs> 21-3872. Just go in and ask what it's for. No big deal. Maybe not for you. Beth, you can do it. Mm, this is not gonna end well. I just know it. Okay. I'll call you as soon as it's over. I'll be waiting. <laughs> Fun. Whoa, ho, ho. What's this? Oh, cute. Hey, doing a little end of the day shopping, huh? See something you like? I like everything. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. I'm Lamont. This is my place. So if you got any questions, I'm the guy to ask. Actually, I do have a question. Um, this friend of mine found the number of a receipt that came from this shop, and she asked me to ask you what the receipt is for. Hmm. But if Being you're honest? really busy, or you'd rather not, or it's against the rules... No problem. What's the number? Uh, 21-3872. 21-3872. Here we go. That ticket was for a large box of assorted unknown items I bought from Henry Beaulieu. And, uh, that's all I can tell you. Wait, he bought something from Beaulieu and then someone else bought it back? Who was at the house? Assorted unknown items? It's a box with a bunch of different things in it, kind of like a grab bag. Look, I just don't want to make trouble for anyone, okay? Can you tell me what was in the box? It's still in the back room. I haven't had a chance to really go Ooh. through it yet. Hey, is there something else I can help you with? Beads, hula dolls, old books. Got great deals on all of them. Um... Is Henry Boulay a friend of yours? No, I met him at the reception at Bruno's house following the funeral. Gave Henry my card, said when he wanted to start liquidating, he should give me a call. Hmm. I met him at the reception at Bruno's house. Was Bruno a friend of yours? Way I hear it, Bruno Boulay didn't have any friends. Mm, but I wish he had been my friend. I mean, that house of his is filled with junk. He kept everything. For someone in my business, the place is knick-knack heaven. Seeing as this place is called Zeke's, and it's your place, shouldn't your name be Zeke? Guy I bought this place from wouldn't sell it to me unless I swore I wouldn't change the name. So I didn't. Funny thing was, his name wasn't Zeke either. <laughs> Maybe I'll have another look around in here. You got a question, just holler. Okay. Oh! <laughs> Amazing. Um, can I do anything? Don't think so. Ooh! Mummy? Mummy, mummy! Mystical toast. <laughs> oh, you want to go, peep? Little sausage man. 
You can also lay like that if you want. Yeah. Get cozy. What is this? Why can I move these things? Maybe we want the weight to like shift to here. Oh wait. Oh. Could put something on there. Hmm. Giggling powder. <laughs> Uh oh, don't open it. <laughs> this might come in handy. Uh oh? Wait, what are you planning? Snooping after all? And she's back! What's up with all those bottles of weird stuff over there? Who do something some of the more superstitious people around here practice? They think if you mix certain herbs and roots a certain way and drink them, or carry special objects around in little mojo bags, it can give you a supernatural edge in your daily life. Ah, like the lady at the house. Does it work? All I can tell you is, the stuff I got in here sounds like hotcakes. Somebody thinks it works, so hey, who knows? I guess I'll check this place out some more. Take your time. Should we maybe call Nancy? I can check that off. Just check Lamont so I can look through the box of stuff. Can't look at that. Well, oh. I've got the right idea. Wait, why would you want to push this up? That doesn't quite cut it. Cut what? This seems to be connected, maybe, but I'm not sure. Fan to the plug. Oh, oh yeah. Do you think it's gonna move the little boat? <laughs> I have no idea. I I get this part, I think. Oh, it might pop the balloon. Maybe this needs to be here and then it rolls into this and then something flies away. Yeah, hints hints would be good. So start at the right. The radio needs to be on the right. So do I do? That doesn't quite cut it. No. Sneeze powder. Oh, to this? Oh, I could put it to the uh, on the thing. He sneezes and leaves. Oh my god, this is so weird. But what does what will be the first step? This balloon goes up. It pushes this shelf. So what would it need to push up to do something? Maybe the books would fall over. Oh no, I can't do that. But yeah, the books falling over sounds like a like this pushes this pushes those. But what would push this? Because the shelf goes to the right, doesn't it? Teeth? Put every item first until it works. That is actually a good idea, yeah. Well, I've got the right idea. Okay. So the radio's in the goods in the right spot. Well what would 
music do? What would music trigger? The hula dance so you can dance? Oh, there's a spot right next to it. Let's see. Well, I've got the right idea. Oh my god, okay, and then what? Yeah, I think she could knock over books, maybe? Still okay. need some work. So that is too heavy. Uh, maybe. Oh, maybe actually this one. Well, I've got the right idea. Okay. So what is... This is probably too heavy, right? No. Still need some work. <laughs> too heavy. I think this one might go there. Still need some work. Okay, that definitely did something. But where did it go? It, I didn't see the bowling ball. What would it be able to bite? I feel like this one's in the right place because it goes in the socket. I think it might stab the balloon. That doesn't quite cut it. Okay, so something can be on there. Oh yeah, wait, so this one there. Maybe that there? God, I have no idea how this works. Do, 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 do. This, is gonna, this music is gonna be in my dreams. Hmm? I had it. Okay, that does do something. Does this do anything, you think? That's it? Hmm. What a weird puzzle. Dude at the desk is like, why is she playing that song like 30 times? Oh. There, that should do it. Um, Lamont, could you help me? Sure, what do you need? Um, I can't quite reach that bottle up there. Could you get it for me? <laughs> sure. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the most elaborate thing ever. something what do you need no spray back room <laughs> no spray back room got it <laughs> <laughs> the most elaborate thing ever is that the box bruno and someone weird picture a box can I take that? Uh, 
This seems really important. Oh god, where's my phone? Oh. Wondrous this summer, both stayed in the south of France for only a few days. Spent far too much time in the kitchen. Bone very poor. We brought only a simple chocolate for so dinner. Just things like that. That's how she is. I must be off to post quickly before the fog rolls in. I'm expecting parcels. I'm a Linda. Hmm. That's the outfit. So, Hamlet codes. Letters. So much sneezing. That letter and the Hamlet clue go together. For this, or...? You can call Nancy. Hello. I found out that receipt is for a box of stuff that Lamont, that's the guy who owns Zeke's, bought from Henry Bollet. No kidding. Lamont? What kind of stuff did Henry sell him? Well, the box is in the back room, and it contains assorted unknown items, and that's all Lamont would tell me. Said something about not wanting to get anyone in trouble. But you'll be happy to know that I have snuck into said back room and can tell you exactly what's in the box. Excellent. Let's hear it. Okay. I found a really old photo of a boy and a dog, and there was a photo of an iguana dressed up like a pirate. What? <laughs> you heard me. And there's a costume in the box. Of a skeleton man. Really? Thought you'd like that. There's also a box that's locked by some kind of letter combination and that has two pieces of paper stuck to it. On the first piece is a bunch of goofy stuff written by someone named Amelinda, and on the second is a bunch of numerical references to passages from Hamlet, some of which don't even exist according to a note that I think Lamont made. Did you unlock the box? No, I have no idea how. Well, maybe there's something on those two pieces of paper that'll tell you. I'm not gonna open the box. Yes, you are. You have to. There could be something really important inside. Because of me, Lamont's out there having a sneezing conniption. I need to get him some nose spray before he breaks some part of his body I didn't even know he had. Beth, please. We've got to be thorough. And you've come too far to give up now. You can do it. I know you can. Oh, all right. Awesome. Maybe I can help you. If you've got any suggestions, I sure wouldn't mind hearing them. Okay. My guess is that some kind of code is involved. You said that there are numerical references on the second page? Yeah, to passages from Hamlet. Maybe all that matters is the individual numbers and what order they're in. Try applying the numbers to what Amalinda wrote. Like, if the first number's three, write down what the third letter is. And if the second number's five... I count five letters from there and write it down. Okay, I can do this. I won't call you again until after I've opened it. Okay, wait. So, one, three, thirty-two? So is it like the first letter, L, three from that? So E, and then thirty-two? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, seven, eight, nine, thirty, thirty-one, B, eight, three, six. So eight from B. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, E. One, two, three, N. One, two, three, four, five, six, U. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and God, if you fuck up counting at any point, then you're fucked. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. D. <laughs> One, two, three, four, T. <laughs> This dude is just sneezing forever. Okay, T and then one, so that's O. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, D. And then X. I don't know what that means. A 
and then X. Oh, I counted right. Oh my god. Dr. Bole, this completes our transaction. The Whisperer is now yours. Whoa, Respect its power. Weird. I better call Nancy and read this to her word for word. As my grandfather found out in doing this skull. Wow, Bess, that is weird. No, I'll tell you what's weird. The box the letter is in is padded and it has this round indentation in it that's the exact size of a human skull. Chris's skull. It's like it used to contain a skull, but now it doesn't. Good job, Bess. The name of the game. here and see if I can find out anything about a skull called the Whisperer. You better go take care of Lamont. Would you believe it? The guy is still <laughs> sneezing. He must keep nose spray around because something's wrong with his sinuses. Oh, he's gonna hate me. <laughs> Oh my god, okay, that was very funny. That was a hard puzzle. All done. Did that. I haven't done that. Check. Um find, look for anything that might help me find out what happened to the skull that used to be in the box. Okay, maybe we should look at the model and see if there's any place we want to go to. So we need to, like, memorize the way. So through the gates, there's this, and we can go every way. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. We can go to the mausoleum. Yeah, where do we want to go to? Terra Siesta, Slumber Gardens, Sorrow Park. Or should we just go whichever way? Okay, so here we are. Let's just start by going left. Nothing. Well. Good start. That way. The writhing, writhing? Is it writhing or writhing? Because I never know. Like, writhe in pain? Writhing in pain? There's actually nothing I can do here. Writhing. Is writhing in pain. Okay. Ooh, special. Locked. She didn't say it. It's locked. To figure <gasps> out if there's anything camouflaged in that design, I'm gonna need some paper. The crow thing. Okay. I don't. Can't you just put that? Oh, that's why we have this. Okay, so we just need a piece of paper. Can you use this? No. Interesting. Okay, need some paper. Oh, that leads back. Okay, let me go that way again then. Let's go straight. Sorrow Park. Nothing. What about down there? Hmm. Mmm. There's definitely something coming up with those mushrooms. See them everywhere. That's a cool view. Charlie Wicker. West, north, east, south, west, north. <laughs> Got it. My favorite thing. When that's in that new 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 Yeah, there are definitely directions for something. Ah, we're in the top right corner now. Hmm. 
<laughs> Slumber Gardens. I wonder where we're gonna get some paper. Hmm. A little boat. Weird looking mushrooms. I guess this might be for later. full circle. Oh yeah, this thing. What is that? Why would I need that? Do you think we could ask for some paper? Hello again. Do you by any chance have some plain paper that I could use? I most certainly do, but it's up in my room and I'm afraid I cannot retrieve it for you until I'm finished here. You get the sudden urge to draw a picture? Something like that. I know, I'll help you. That way you'll get done faster. Gracious, you are the picture of impatience, aren't you? Well, I appreciate the offer. But here, why don't you just take this instead? It's an extra key to my room. Huh. The paper's in a drawer in my nightstand. Just go on up and help yourself. But make sure you lock the door when you leave, you hear? You I trust. But Henry, him I do not. <laughs> I really appreciate this. And long as you're going up there, my appetite could use a little placating. So I would be much obliged if you would bring me a candy bar from my nightstand. Mm -hmm. And take one for yourself while you're at it. A candy bar. Thank you. Lifelong friendship unlocked. Thanks for the candy bar. Hi. That was the room that was open. This was the one that was locked. Let's go! Nightstand. Paper. Thank you. Okay. What else? Time to snoop! One Candy bars! Me. I knew it was gonna be Coco Crinkle. <laughs> and one for me. Oh, chocolate. My beloved. Yum. Gosh, these things are good. Yes, I want it. For some reason, I have like a very specific chocolate bar in mind that I think it would taste like, but now I can't think of the name. I don't know if they still do that, but when I was a kid for Sinter class, we would get these like chocolate cigarettes. Those little like chocolate sticks that are wrapped in like paper. I, I don't think they call them cigarettes anymore. It's like... um. Uh, probably there's something else now. They're called something else, but they're like a little packet and there's like little sticks in it. For some reason, it's exactly those things that I think a Coco Kringle bar would taste like. And it's so specific. <laughs> Kutjes rape. Yes! Oh my god, Marlus! That's it! That's exactly what I was thinking of. And I forgot the name. A Kutjes rape. Yes! That's exactly what I thought of. <laughs> That is so specific. Oh my god, okay. Ooh, hiccup powder. Why'd she have that? What does it mean? It's just a very specific Dutch chocolate bar. It's kind of on the cheaper end, I would say. Um, and funny enough, it's actually Dutch for a cow bar. So maybe, maybe subconsciously because it has a cow on it, I was thinking of that one. I don't know. Very funny. Coach's rape. Ooh. Spooky. Why'd she write that on her wall, I wonder? Maybe we can ask her about it. Ooh, what is this? Ooh, they're buttons. Oh wait, I can't undo them. Do you think we need to make these symbols? Oh, that's... no, not exactly. Okay, that's this one. Oh, I might have to write this down because this seems like a lot. 
Okay, so the second button. How many are there? How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's ten. So number two is for the bottom left one. Nope. Ooh, the heart one. That's that one for sure. That's number four. That's that one, top right. Um, I think that's that one as well. Maybe? Ooh, that one is here. So that's number seven. Up, mm. oh, that one's in there. Nine is bottom left. Mm, no, yeah, I think that one is in there. Top right. I can't see what that is. What is that? This messy thing? Three dots. It could be part of this. Or uh, maybe... No, it's... Yeah, I think it's that actually in there. That's 12. That's bottom right. That's bottom right as well. Is it this one? Yeah. That is the top left one. Bottom left. That might be this one. Oh, and this one. This is two of them. Uh, I can't tell. Wait. That's a lot in that one. That must be the one on the left, right? No. Oh, that's confusing. Oh, it's bottom left. Bottom right, I mean. Okay, let's see if I can make some of these now. Uh, let's start bottom left. Let's reset. Okay, so that should be this one. Uh, the ninth one. Sixteen and seventeen. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at me! <laughs> I did it. Okay. Um, what's the bottom right? So that should be eleven. Thirteen. Fourteen. And eighteen. <laughs> okay, top right. Mm, five, six, eight, ten. Oh, that wasn't it? Those definitely seem right. Maybe not 10 then, maybe 12? No. I'm missing the dots. That seems right so far, right? You don't need six? Oh. Oh, so it was eight. Okay. Top left. Three, six, seven, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. Wait, where's the. Oh, four. Oh, I'm still missing something. Maybe that one? Oh yeah, I didn't write the top one down. <laughs> That's my mistake. Okay. Seven. Nice. Hoodoo signs and symbols. Okay. Let's see. To most people, spells spectriloquy. Is that how you write that? Spectriloquy. 
To most people, spells that are cast using words spoken aloud sound like gibberish, repetitive, nonsensical, and annoying. But those are powerful spells indeed. So powerful that there are only two ways to negate them. One is to discern the precise meaning and purpose of the spell and to vocalize the appropriate counterspell. But this demands intimate knowledge not only of hoodoo words, but of the motivations of the spell's creator, and this is often impossible. The more common method of disenchantment involves writing the symbolic equivalent of the spell on an object placed between the originator of the spell and its recipient, recipient a practice known as spectriloquy. Once a spell is broken down into individual sounds, each sound is translated into a letter from the spectral alphabet and then drawn left to right on a fence, wall, window, etc. The spectral alphabet is comprised of 28 symbols and based on four basic vowel sounds. A, U, U, E. Almost all hoodoo words can be f represented by modifying these four basic symbols. Okay, wow. That is a picture. Done. Oh, that's it? Okay, anything else? Is that it? We should close that though. Okay. Um. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> I can just look at it. Spooky! <laughs> Let's see what we got. Uh, triangle line. Ba. Uh, oh, these look complicated. Well, they're cool to write, though. That's za. Buzza. Buzza, dude. And then circle. Like a Mercedes logo. <laughs> Oh, that's Lou. Buzza, Lou. And then... It's probably a protective spell or something. Um, that is... Pop. Then a little square. D. <laughs> spell just ends in D's nuts. The little nose is... Moo. And then that is... Ka. So whatever that means, we have it now. Baza Mercedes these nuts. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, well, whatever the spell is, we have it now. You can probably ask her about it. Oh, we should lock the door, she said. Oh. I just wanted to lock it, but I guess I can't. So we have the paper. There's a couple things we could do now. Wait, let me see if there's nothing new to talk about with our little emo boy. Yes. I actually do like the way he looks. I'm going to keep looking around. Groovy. I want more men with uh, nail polish. I like it when men wear nail polish. Where was it? I'll try straight first, I can't remember. Oh, perfect. Hmm. Okay. Is this the crow one? No. Huh. Interesting. Oh, these as well. Bones. There it is. That's the same one, isn't it? Yeah, totally. All done. So, for some reason, Skeleton Man was tracing this stone. Make rubbings of the panels. Did that. Okay, we're we're on track. I like where this is going. This is oh, 
Okay, this is definitely shaping up to maybe be one of my favorites. I love the spooky ones! Let's see, how do we, um... Let's give her the chocolate bar. You bring me that Coco Kringle bar like I asked? Sure did! Right here! Bless you. I'm so hungry I could devour these plants I'm potting up, dirt and all. How else may I be of service to you? Whose boat is tied up down there where the bayou comes up to the cemetery? Do Still needs to drink my protein that would be my as well. Boat. Comes in very handy when I need to forage for certain swamp dwelling plants. Ooh. Those weird symbols on the wall in your I think room. she painted Do you them. Know who it's probably them? like a protective I spell. Do. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, there's a spirit living in that wall. A spirit? Got a voice that it sends shivers down the spine of Dracula himself. Used to hear it sometimes in the dead of night. Mm. Half talking, half whispering, saying this one word I never heard before, like it was from a language no one on earth spoke. And suddenly I knew the spirit was trying to cast a secret spell tunnel. On me. So I got me a book and found out that by painting the word I heard on the wall, Syllable by syllable, in hoodoo signs, I could counteract the word's power. And you know what? The spirit has not spoken that word or any other since. What was the word? Darling, a sack full of water moccasins couldn't get me to say that word out loud. Nor will I write it down, no sir. Not ever, ever, ever. The He's other room we you. can go into, Come the empty bedroom, anytime. where that random wall we could look to look at that is definitely maybe if we do something with the clock maybe it'll open like a panel yes i'll stop bugging you now okay. sounds good he doesn't know anything um what are we gonna do with those Impressions that I made now. Do you think there's something else I can examine? Something else I can look at? Oh. That's a creepy one to wear. What? Can you imagine your dentist has a dark eye like that? Maybe that was his party eye. Nothing there. Hehe. <laughs> That honestly sounds like that TikTok, the snoring sound. the top left one the worm what was the first thing i got the coffin then the bones and then the bird i guess that's not it what's the oh it's the the surrounding pattern okay so that's this one The worm is this one. So I just had them the other way around. Hmm. So that's how we get in there. Oh, exciting. Let's see. How do I get there again? I think it was here. Yes. <laughs> I'm not crying. It's just raining on my face. Hmm. Marcel. Marianne. 
Claude. Um, ooh. This must be the painting that goes in that empty frame. Cool. Got it. I can't like turn around or anything. There's nothing else I can look at. Maybe we should write down the dates. Marcel, 1826 to 1890. Fifi, 1918 to 1981. Claude, 1955, 1990. And Marianne. 1959, 1990 as well. Hmm. Okay. Well, we have the frame. So maybe we should put that in and see what happens. I really love exploring a cemetery like that. It reminds me of that time we played Siberia and we went to the... Ah, oh, the game is so good. We went to the cemetery. So what does that do? The background may be significant, like it's blue, green, brown, purple. Yellow, mm, brown, blue, red. Gray, maybe? He has a toothbrush. Oh, an axe? Banana? Uh, it has to be something like lollipop, something about what they're holding. All done. Something next door. Look for clues. All done. Combination to the lock that's on the crate. Did that. Figure out what the deal is with those symbols on the wall and Renee's Can't check room. that off yet. Maybe we can call again. Did that. Status update. Banana Man is back. Yeah. Hello. Hey, what's going on? That's funny. That's what I was going to ask you. I'll see you later. Bye. Uh, wait, so nothing? <clears throat> Nancy's like, can you ask this and this? Sneeze lady, what's going on? That gumbo stand outside? What do you think? Is it pretty authentic? Outstanding! Just watch the hot sauce. Whatever's in it gives my stomach instant fits. I mean, if it's spicy, that's enough. Maybe I'll have another look around in here. Take your time. Well, at least he's still nice. He doesn't hate you. I don't think there's anything else. We were pretty thorough, though. Granny's seafood gumbo, Lucky Jack's jambalaya, Granddad's bowl of crawfish. A bowl of gumbo, please. Enjoy. Tasty. Tasty. Hmm. Ah, then. Ooh, that looks legit. Like that's an actual picture of food. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. There you go. <sighs> Tasty. I'm sure they taste amazing, but mm. no, thank you. Well, I think that's all she can do. Hello. What's up? Not much. What about you? Ditto. Talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. Uh. Why the cab company? I wonder why that one is in here. Hello, Nancy? Hey, Ned. It's about time you called. Did you make it to New Orleans okay? Yep. Have you seen Henry? Oh, yeah. I'm not sure I like the way you said <laughs> that. Is he okay? He's fine. 
Well, he's the executor of his great uncle Bruno's estate, which he's not real happy about. But he and his great uncle weren't that close, so he's not grief stricken or anything. Well, then, are you okay? Other than being attacked on my way into Henry's house by a skeleton wearing a red I mean, didn't you see him crying in the, the cemetery? Me at me, I'm fine too. What? Let's just say that I've stumbled onto a mystery, and I'm not leaving mystery. till I solve it. Why am I not surprised? Is Bess with you? No, but she has been helping me. So tell me about this skeleton man. Well, it was someone in a costume, obviously. He or she was leaning over something in the great room when I walked in and surprised them. So they threw a smoke bomb at you and ran? Yeah, they must have interrupted whatever they were doing. What were they leaning over? A scale model of the cemetery next door. Henry says his great uncle Bruno made it so he could keep track of who was buried there. Apparently, Bruno used to oversee the cemetery. And right near the scale model, I found a tracing of some kind of symbol. I'm thinking maybe Skeleton Man dropped it. Why would Skeleton Man be interested in the scale model of a cemetery? Good question. Maybe I'll take a real good look around in there and see if I can find out. Good idea. I'm still trying to figure out how you got to be friends with Henry. Well, we're not best friends or anything. Heck, we're not really even friends. I just feel sorry for the guy. I mean, he never hangs out with anyone between classes. And when I'd heard there'd been a death in the family, I just wanted to make sure he was okay all by himself down there. Oh, Don't that's worry, nice. He's fine. Although I think he misses his parents a lot. I saw him out in the cemetery by what I think is their crypt. He seemed pretty upset. I'm not surprised. I get the feeling that what Henry looks like on the outside is just the opposite of what he looks like on the inside. You know, hmm. you're a pretty nice guy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Bruno Bollet's housekeeper, Renee, is still here, despite the fact that she and Henry don't really get along that well. Why do you think she's staying on? She says it's because Bruno paid her in advance. But you don't believe her. 10% of Bruno's estate is supposed to go to her. Only she thinks, and with kind of good reason, that Henry's been selling off Bruno's assets on the sly. So it wouldn't surprise me if she's staying on so she can try to bust him. What's this kind of good reason stuff? I know for a fact that Henry sold a box of Bruno's things to a local curio shop. So this Renee person isn't just being paranoid. What this Renee person is, is freaky. Freaky? She wanted me to drink some strange looking concoction after I passed out from the smoke bomb, but she refused to tell me what was in it. And she wears this weird little pouch around her neck. Says what's inside it connects her to the energy that powers the universe. She's probably harmless, but stay on her good side, just in case. Hmm. I feel like they both seem fine. Like, I'm Good honestly morning, not boy. really suspecting Great anyone morning. at the moment. I will. Talk to you soon. You'd better. Bye. Hmm. Weird. Okay, well, that didn't really help us that much. We have the books, the clock. Figure out what the deal is with those symbols. Yeah, I really thought that with the symbol thing, I thought that we would maybe pass it along to Bess and then Bess would ask the shop guy because he seems to know his way around hoodoo. I was hoping that he could tell us what the spell is. Yes. I'm going to keep looking around. Groovy. That apparently doesn't help us either. So I guess maybe there's just more to explore in the yard because that's one of the task list things. Can I take this yet? No. I guess it's for later. Yeah, we got we got a lemon? That must be to reveal hidden messages or something, right? I think. Um, let's see. This one? Oh, I keep thinking these are like notes or something, but they're just candles. Hmm. Oh, there. Oh! <gasps> what was that? That was Uncle Bruno's pet iguana, Iggy. He's always in here stealing the music. Me. He must be using it to build a nest or something. Look, I had all those books arranged so they fit perfectly in that box. Put them back in, okay? I don't have time. I just want to look through this one book. Go right ahead. After you put all those other books back. Oh, we've done a puzzle like this in the past. Very tricky. Hmm. 
Okay, hmm. that fits. I can't rotate them, can I? Oh, this is a tiny one. <laughs> um, hmm. This little opening bugs me. Maybe we should put these here since these are the same height and then put that there. That's it. Ooh, ooh, phone number. I don't know if it automatically saves it, so let me just write that down. Three, four, two, seven. Beatrice Hotchkiss. That sounds familiar. Do we know her from a different game? One of the most ancient and widespread legends known to humankind can be summed up thusly. Scattered over the earth are 13 humanoid skulls carved out of pure crystal. That makes me think of the Indiana Jones movie. The French game. Ah, the Royal Tower. Yes. Um, at some point in the future, fate will bring the 13 skulls together and they will speak, imparting wisdom that will save the human race from annihilation and usher in a golden era of peace and enlightenment. Jesus Christ. There are several versions of this legend. In one, the skulls were created by Mayans, Incans, or Aztecs, and collectively form a repository of information detailing how and why humans came to be. Another legend credits their creation to extraterrestrials who seeded the Earth with the human race and left the skulls behind to explain their actions at some point in the future. Oh my god. Yeah, another contends the skulls are ancient in origin, but more important that each skull is somehow magical in and of itself. Distinctive gifts they offer their owners reputedly include precognition, clairvoyance, telekinesis, and, of course, immortality. Of course! Some variations combine all of the above. What is both indisputable and intriguing about the general legend and its smaller, colorful variations is that several mysterious crystal skulls have indeed been discovered in the past millennium, turning up in all corners of the earth. What follows is an examination of everything that currently is known about these skulls in hopes of separating the facts of their existence from the fantasies of human imagination. The Whisper. That's the one we read about. The first documented reference to the crystal skull is known as the Whisperer, came in 1532, ooh, it was a long time ago, shortly after Hernando de Soto helped Francisco Pizarro ambush and capture the Incan emperor Atahualpa at the battle of Cajamarca, de Soto's aide de camp, I don't know how to pronounce any of these, while updating the de Soto's expedition records noted that during Atahualpa's subsequent imprisonment, de Soto befriended the Incan ruler. In time, Atahualpa told de Soto a secret. He possessed an exquisitely detailed life-sized human skull that the ancient ones had carved out of pure clear crystal. He happened upon it at the hut of a deceased high priest whose astonishingly advanced age had caused his fellow priests out of fear and jealousy to slip him a fatal dose of poison. Atahualpa took a fancy to the skull and kept it and soon realized that the skull which he contended would sometimes whisper to him in an unearthly voice using unfamiliar words was giving him immunity to all human ailments. As long as he possessed the skull, Atahualpa told De Soto he would live forever. Then how did the dude die of poisoning? But like the priest before him, and like everyone who possessed this particular skull after him, Atahualpa soon discovered that while the skull could perhaps protect him from the ravages of time and nature, it was no match for the treachery of his fellow man. To De Soto's great surprise and dismay, Pizarro had Atahualpa executed. Although there is no other mention of the skull in De Soto's records, it is highly doubtful that the Spaniard would have left such a treasure behind when he returned to Europe in 1536. Indeed, the next documented reference to the crystal skull, which Atahualpa seems to have inadvertently bequeathed to De Soto, be came in a letter written by a nobleman in the court of Philip II, the member of, an, of the Austrian Habsburg 
family who took over the Spanish Empire in 1556. While a guest at the Habsburg Palace in Vienna, the nobleman, nobleman mentions encountering a crystalline head of death, which a manservant swore made utterances strange and low, too terrible for the ear to bear. Whenever I see manservant, I always think of angry beavers. They have this amazing Halloween special. It's honestly the best Angry Beavers episode ever. And there's a dude in it who is a butler and he comes up to uh, comes up to the beavers and he says uh, uh, I'm his manservant, Manservante. That's his name. <laughs> Manservante. Apparently, the skull then made its way to France, most likely via Anne of Austria, who married King Louis XIII of France in 1615, because the next reference to a death's head carved from a remarkably clear crystal can be found in a manifest of a ship belonging to René Robert Cavalier, Sieur de la Salle, a French explorer who, in 1684, was preparing for a journey that would take the skull, ironically, back to the new world from which it had come. The fact that La Salle took the skull with him on his expedition to colonize the Mississippi River Valley suggests that he may have been aware of its reputation for conferring immortality upon its owner. But once again, his real enemy proved to be not age or disease, but his fellow man. A group of his men stranded in what now is, is now Texas after the expedition landed in the wrong place and antagonized the local Native Americans eventually mutinied and killed La Salle so they could abandon their mission and head for the relative safety of French outposts in Canada. The Whisperer, however, appears to have been left behind and didn't reappear until almost 200 years later. The photo to the right, found in the basement of a library in Jonesboro, Arkansas, suggests that by 1881, Atahualpa's crystal skull had found itself in the hands of a traveling huckster who apparently used it to lure potential patrons to his wagon so he could sell them various bombs and elixirs. If he is the same Curtis Caldwell who, according to census records, settled in Baton, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, he lived and worked to the ripe old age of 93, dying only when a dissatisfied customer set fire to his house in a fit of anger. Ooh, murder? Oh, God. Nancy, don't scare me like that. Jesus. If the Whisperer was in Caldwell's house, it no doubt survived the fire. But exactly what happened to it next has, has proved impossible to discern, and its current whereabouts is a mystery. But what is known about the skull's previous owners could prove very useful in solving that mystery, for all the people who have possessed it have had two things in common. They lived for an unusually long time, and they always, without exception, met with death at the end of another. In other words, the trail that leads to the discovery of this particular crystal skull will likely be one that begins with murder. Murder, murder, murder. Cool. That must have probably been it for the crystal skull, right? Did that. Mm-hmm. All Let's done. The book. The card. Oh, yeah. They're just regular-ass letters, but... What else have you seen that has an arrangement? Oh, it could be the pictures actually, yeah. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's it. Well, it's not the colors, because yellow would have been a Y, right? U for umbrella, maybe? Puppy? Banana. Toothbrush. Maybe. Monkey. Hat. Okay. Um. Give me a break here. You never said anything about that. Well, how was I supposed to know? I mean, what am I, telepathic? No, no, come on. Don't get... Look, I'll, I'll see what I can do, okay? 
What do you mean, something else? You gotta be kidding me, Summer. I don't have that kind of money. No, no, I meant... I don't have it now, but I will soon, okay? Mm. Bye. Oh, man. Mm hmm Oh, man. What is that? Eye of the Beholder. Hmm. <gasps> the spider. Locked, naturally. Hmm. I feel like there's something on the stairs, but no. Nah. Hmm. I have the beholder. Huh. Oh, the clock. Maybe it's for the clock. So this is definitely a different one. <laughs> Dude's like, what did she just take from the book? And I'm like, ah, nothing, nothing. Nothing to see here. Oh, no, it just counts as a regular eye. Hmm, too bad. Okay, more eyeballs. Hmm, call the professor. Oh, the number I got. Hotchkiss. I completely forgot I got the number. Yes, hello. Hi, my name's Nancy Drew. Is this Professor Hodgkiss? I am she. Nancy Drew. Your name has a ring to it. Do I know you? Yes, as a matter of fact, we met a little while <laughs> back in Wisconsin. Oh, yes. You were the delightful young lady doling out the samples in the tasting room of that for the cheese? Uh, no. I met you at Whitford Castle. That's ridiculous. There was no cheese <laughs> at Whitford Castle. No, no. We were both guests <laughs> there. I found a journal written by Marie Antoinette, which you translated. Remember? Thanks to you, suddenly all I can think about is how wonderful a nice big slab of Colby Jeez. cheese would taste right now. Listen, Mandy, I'm on a deadline, so if you could Mandy. please just tell me why you called. But my name is... Deadline. Let's cut to the chase, shall we? Chop, chop. Did a man from New Orleans named Bruno Bollet ever call you? Ah, now there's a name you can remember. Bollet, nice and French. I'm a scholar of French history, you know. Yes, I know. So did Bruno Bollet call you? Indeed he did. Oui, oui. oui. <laughs> Why did he call, if you don't mind my asking? Because he had read my book, of course. The Crystal Skull. Fact or fable, one of my best efforts. Sold like hotcakes smothered in a rich, tangy lemon sauce. Did he say anything about owning one of the skulls himself? I would have hung up on him straight away if he had. I tell you, Brandy, if I had a skull <laughs> for every crackpot who's called claiming to own one of those skulls, I'd be able to dine at the Russian tea room every evening for the rest of my life. All right, that's a bit of hyperbole, but you get the picture. No. That's how you write hyperbole? Oh my god. I never knew. The skull called the Whisperer. He wanted to know if I had learned any more about it since my book was published, which I hadn't, or if I had any theory as to what happened to it, which I didn't. And that was the extent of your conversation? Well, now, let me think. My, my, such insatiable curiosity, Nelly. You remind me of someone I encountered on one of my journeys. But for the life of me, I cannot remember her name or the circumstances. Nancy Drew, Wickford Castle? Ah, the eyes have it. I'm sorry? That's what Bruno Bollet said when I turned the tables and asked him if he had any idea where the Whisperer was. He said... The eyes have it. Then he chuckled and hung up. Hmm. How much would a crystal skull like the Whisperer be worth? In this crazy day and age? Where the shorn hair and used tissues of celebrities get sold for thousands of dollars? 
There's absolutely no telling, Candy. <laughs> a half million dollars easily. Maybe even a million. Maybe two. Maybe ten. The sky's the limit. Cha ching, cha ching. Probably even more than that. If someone found a skull made of crystal, how could they be sure it's one of the crystal skulls? Wonderful question, Francis. How indeed? Because there are sure to be thousands of fakes out there. Perhaps tens of thousands. But remember, the real skulls were made long before the tools commonly used for carving today were invented. Which means... Let's put on our thinking caps. Modern day tools would have left marks if the skull was a fake? Exactly so. Mind you, the marks on a good fake would be microscopic and thus imperceptible to the human eye. However, any thorough laboratory analysis would quickly unmask a counterfeit. So the only way to prove that a skull is the real deal is by proving it's not a fake? And by examining its provenance, its history of ownership. Provenance. If it can be shown that a particular specimen has been passed along from antiquity into modern times and didn't just suddenly appear in, say, Germany in the mid-19th century, that would tend to support its authenticity as well. The idea that the Whisperer can make its owner immortal, do you believe that? I believe that things that defy any so-called rational explanations happen Nessie. all the time, Nessie. Now, does that mean there are mysterious external forces at work in the universe of which we do not and cannot ever have full knowledge? Or does it all boil down to us? If the human heart desperately wants something to be true, does the human mind have the power to make it true? Who knows? Oh, questions, questions, questions. Oh, how dreary life would be without them. In your book, you said that all the people who've ever owned the Whisperer were murdered, yet Bruno Bollet dropped dead of a heart attack. Are you saying the Whisperer was in his possession after all? The scallywags! Hmm? Why didn't he tell me that? Oh, that's right. I would have hung up on him. <laughs> well, if that's the case, then I strongly suggest you take a close look at his so-called heart attack, Sandy. Because if he owned Maybe the Maybe he was murdered. And he died, I guarantee you it was at the hands of someone else. Or oh, my name's not Beatrice Gertrude Winifred Hodgkins. I better go. Thank you. Rock and hmm. roll. Yeah, very interesting that she said, like, if the mind wants something, it can make it come true. Because I've just been reading stuff about, um, like, I guess positive affirmation. I know it's kind of like corny but um so one of my big issues from the last i would say half year is like more and more nightmares like just like situations that my mind is like simulating like bb would get lost bb i have to travel with bb but he is not in a bag or like in a little container so he's like super stressed and i'm trying to hold on to him so he doesn't escape or like, you know, um, being late for your flight and like you just can't get your stuff back. Those kind of nightmares. So apparently there's a thing you can try and do that um, if you, right before you go to sleep, instead of like being stressed for the next day, like what if I am too late for my appointment? What if I have to make a phone call or what if whatever? Um, you have to turn it around. So last night I went to bed being like, what if BB sleeps safe and sound? What if I'm going to have a great workout tomorrow? What if I'm going to dream that I can fly tonight? And like really like nice, fun things and then try and go to bed with those thoughts. And I actually didn't have a nightmare. It's kind of like a fun exercise to try and influence your own thoughts and kind of like restructure it. So for example, one of the things I hate is making phone calls, right? So um, I'll be like, what if I can't understand them? And then I have to ask what they said. And then I still can't understand them. And then I have to ask again. Um, like, that's like a thought pattern I go into. But what if then instead of that, you're like, what if this phone call goes perfectly fine? And I can understand what they're saying perfectly fine. It's like, what if that happens? It's like, that would be nice. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like restructuring 
your anxieties in a way. Um, I'm gonna keep trying it, but so far actually it's kind of giving me a little yes. bit of peace of mind, so who knows? How did Bruno die, if you don't mind my asking? Just dropped dead in the front hallway. I mean, the guy was 95 the years old. Here, check it out. Oh, he My was 95? Infarction. That's Ooh. doctor speak for heart attack. Attending physician, Dr. Gilbert Buford, 504-555-9970. Was that Bruno's doctor? And his best friend, or so I'm told. Hmm, best him. friend. Interesting keychain. That's one of Uncle Bruno's glass eyes. Oh. It's the one he was wearing when he died. How nice. Anything else? Okay. I'll stop bugging you now. Sounds good. Hmm. Um, let's leave the room. Call the doctor. Did we get the eye? This is Dr. Gilbert Buford's answering service. How may I help you? I need to talk to Dr. Buford. Could you maybe give me a number where I can reach him? No, ma'am, I cannot. Is this an emergency? Sort of. I mean, it's not a medical emergency. I just... See, I'm only going to be in town for a short time, and Dr. Buford and I have this mutual friend who died recently, and I just really need to talk to him about it. Need some consoling, huh? <laughs> yes, I need some consoling. That's it exactly. Well, tell you what. It's against the rules to give you his phone number, but I can tell you that now that he's all but retired, Dr. Buford spends most of his evenings at his favorite gumbo stand down in the French Quarter. If you really need to talk to him, you can probably find him there. Great. Do you know the address? Oh. It's at the corner of Rampart and Domain. Did you say Rampart and Domain? I did indeed. I Randy did indeed. Cajun cooking. They make some darn fine gumbo. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome, and uh, I'm truly sorry about your loss. My loss? That mutual friend of yours and Dr. Buford. <laughs> oh, right. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Bye. Okay. I do declare. <laughs> Hello? Hi, Bess. It's me. So what's been happening? Tell me everything. Well, let's see. Since the last time we talked, I was just about getting ready to... <laughs> Interesting stuff. But the reason I called is, I need you to talk to this doctor named Gilbert Buford. Maybe that's him. As it turns out, likes to hang out at a gumbo stand called Granny Pumpkin's Cajun Cooking, which should be right across from our hotel. You just want me to talk to him? That's it? Nothing nefarious? Mm -hmm. No black ops stuff? He was Bruno Bollet's doctor, and apparently his best friend, too. I just need for you to see if he thinks there was anything weird about the way Bruno died. What do you mean by weird? I mean, I kind of think maybe Bruno was murdered. Murdered? By whom? Murder, That's murder, murder. That's what I'm trying murder. to figure out. Everyone's a suspect at this point. Including this Gilbert Buford guy? Well... Great, I'm going to be chatting up Jack the Ripper. Oh, I'm sure the guy's fine, but... Subtle, just in case. Well, I can see the gumbo stand from our balcony. If he's the guy that's sitting down there, I guess he looks harmless. Okay, I'll go talk to him. Thanks, Beth. Let me know what happens. Cheerio! Do you think you could get vegetarian gumbo? I would... I've always heard so much about it. I want to try it out, but I don't like shrimp in my food. I'm okay well, with, like... Young lady. How kind of you to grace an old man with your lovely presence. I'm okay with like fried, like tempura shrimp. Fine with that. Like it's very tasty. I mean, they are tasty. It's just that the idea of seafood kind of freaks me out sometimes. Vegan gumbo is wonderful. Oh, chicken and sausage gumbo. Oh my God. Oh, that sounds really tasty. Oh, now I want it. I want to try it. <laughs> My name's Bess Marvin. <laughs> I'm looking for Dr. My name Gilbert is Bess. Buford. Well, it's a pleasure to report that I am he. Do you mind if I join you? Of course not. A little lively discourse would brighten this gloomy evening considerably. This here is my favorite spot in the whole city. Delicious gumbo, pleasing view, 
Particularly now, I might add. Oh my god, he's flirting! I'd like to ask you some questions about Bruno Bollet, if that's okay. I'd prefer a subject matter of a happier nature, but I do not want to seem inhospitable, so what is it you want to know? Um... Is it true that Dr. Bollet was your best friend? Well, now, I was certainly his best friend, but I cannot honestly say that oh. he was mine. Fact is, while socializing with my fellow man, particularly with pretty young women such as yourself, has always been a source of pleasure for me. Bruno was just the opposite. Unfortunately, the older he got, the more numerous his idiosyncrasies became, and the less concern about their negative effect upon others he became. Wait, what? Uh, was he yes, talking about exactly? Didn't bother you? Now, as a doctor of medicine, I am not only accustomed to dealing with the abnormal, but I find that I am actually drawn to it. I, for one, thoroughly enjoyed Bruno's outlandish personality. <laughs> Too much Southern hospitality Although, there, buddy. At the same time, I fear it <laughs> may have played a role in his demise. You see, he died of a myocardial infarction, most likely caused by age-related atherosclerosis. Dying of a heart attack is all too common for people who are socially isolated, and Bruno Bole had most certainly become that. <laughs> I have no friends. Ah! <laughs> Let's see. Autopsy? Did they do an autopsy on Dr. Bole? No. Given Bruno's advanced age and the absence of any indication of foul play, an autopsy was deemed unnecessary, and the body was cremated according to Bruno's wish. Cremated? Ah, oh, dang it. Did Dr. Bollet ever say anything to you about owning a crystal skull? Why, yes. Yes, he did. In fact, he showed it to me once. Said it what? had magical powers. Said owning it was going to allow him to live forever. I thought it was utter nonsense and told him so. Well, he didn't appreciate that at all. Refused to talk to me for a full two weeks. What if it got stolen from him and that's why he died? Because, like not having the skull anymore, him being that old, then the magic that was keeping him alive went away. Or he just got poisoned. What'd the skull look like? It was quite beautiful, actually. Life-size, perfect in form and clarity, like a diamond almost. Tell me, Miss Bess, what do you know about that crystal skull? This friend of mine who is also a friend of Henry Bollet, you know, Dr. Bollet's great nephew. Anyway, while she was visiting Henry, she saw this book in Bruno's library about the legendary crystal skulls and was kind of intrigued and thought that since Henry said that you were pretty much Bruno's only friend, maybe Bruno had said something to you about it. And as it turns out, he had. That's all I know. I uh, see. <laughs> uh, well, see. much as I'd like to believe that skull holds the key to immortality, I'm afraid Bruno's passing proves it's worthless. Although it would make an attractive paperweight, as I recall. Tell your friend not to give it another thought. Hmm. Where was Dr. Bollet when he had his M.I.? In the foyer of his house, just inside the front door. In fact, I hadn't seen him for a while, so I picked that day to pay him a visit. I walked up to the front door, found it unlocked as usual, opened it, and there he was, lying on the floor in obvious distress. The next thing I know, his housekeeper came running in and started shrieking and carrying on, until finally I sent her out of the room so she could summon an ambulance, and I could once again hear myself think. Then I... Well, let's see. Then I knelt down and saw that he wasn't breathing. So I pulled him away from the door away so I'd have more room to work on him and began chest compressions. I continued until the medics arrived, but nothing they did made a difference either. I honestly feel like he might still be alive. Maybe this is all a ruse that they set up together to... Well, I guess then he wouldn't be able to do the paperwork and stuff, Henry. Hmm. Was Dr. Bollet unconscious the whole time? Uh, yes, he was. Can you remember anything that might indicate what he was doing by the front door? I mean, had he just come in from a walk? Was he wearing a hat? Was he holding anything? Had he 
dropped something. An umbrella, sunglasses. Wait a minute. Why, yes. Yes, he was holding something. A piece of paper. And on the floor next to him was an envelope. He must have collapsed while reading a letter. Hmm. Do you know what happened to it? Now, I know the letter was no longer in Bruno's hand when the paramedics arrived, so perhaps he released the letter when I moved him. And yet, I do not recall seeing it on the floor when they wheeled him out the door. Eh? Iggy. What's Iggy? <laughs> Iggy. Iggy. <laughs> Iggy is an iguana Bruno befriended, then turned loose in his home. It soon developed the annoying habit of stealing paper and stockpiling it in the vent system. Are you saying an iguana made off with the letter Bruno had been reading? It would not have been the first time a missing document ended up in Iggy's possession. Rene would periodically call me saying the lizard had absconded with one of Bruno's prescriptions and would I please write her up a replacement? In any case, Bruno once told me he was training Iggy. Said he taught Iggy to retrieve the things it had stolen. <laughs> Do you think it's possible that Rene caused Dr. Bollet's death by, say, hoarding the pills from those missing prescriptions and giving them to him all at once? No. Had he died of an overdose of the medications I had prescribed, the manner of his death would have been quite different. But he died of a heart attack. Of that, I am certain. However, I know for a fact that Rene is deeply involved in the practice of voodoo. And as Bruno's housekeeper, she had ample opportunity to use it against my poor old friend. You mean hoodoo really works? Young lady, never, ever underestimate the power of suggestion. If a person believes in something, even on a subconscious level, fantasy can easily become fact. And who knows what rubbish Rene filled Bruno's mind with. Drink this. Don't eat that. This brings good luck. That brings bad. Day in and day out. Even if he said he didn't believe a word of it. Who knows how much his subconscious was absorbing. He was very old and vulnerable. So could Rene have caused Bruno to have that fatal heart attack? There's not a doubt in my mind she could indeed. I'll let you get back to your gumbo. Good night. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Good work. I'll take it from here. Thanks again. Good luck. Bye. Okay. So, Iggy. He was chilling here last time we checked. Um, but I don't see him now. He was here. Where do you think he went? Hmm. I don't see him sitting around. Yes? I'll let you get back to work. Hint on the door of the hidden what? passage. Um... We can lure him out. Mm, I don't see him here. There's also this weird wall that we haven't done anything with yet. Um, so maybe we can do something with the spider. Spider! Hiding in the corner! Super fucking boring! Oh no, super fucking normal! I ain't afraid of no spider! Hmm, what could we do with the spider? Oh! Okay, trying to f remember if we save first. Trying to remember if we had- oh yeah, I haven't saved in a long time. If we heard music anywhere. Uh, 
Ah. Oh. Okay, okay. I see. There's an order to them. Let's try. Creepy. Okay, that's that. Now, where does that lead, huh? What have we got here? Is it an eyeball? Why would you eat that? Are you kidding me? Who knows how old that thing is? No safety. No safety, no regard for safety. That's what I tried to say. Oh. This must be where I'm supposed to put all the glass eyes I've found. Wait, that's Let's a see lot, how though. Doing. How many more do we need? I don't know. Hmm. That feels like someone doing the sound effects, like... Tuk, 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 tuk. <laughs> Can you hear it? It sounds like a person doing... Tuk, 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 tuk. I honestly don't know what the goal is here. What do you guys think? Do we want all chickens or all eyeballs? All eyes? Three in a row? Well, I got three, yeah. I did it. What does it do? Give me an eyeball. Yep. <laughs> Who would have guessed? Oh, hello. Oh, 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 D. Mu. Ka. Pa. Sa. Mu. Pa. D. Mu. Pa. <laughs> the last denizen buried on my guard will start you hunting through the graveyard. What's written on the headstone will lead you to another, and so on and so forth, till tiny treasure you discover. Okay, that's the Charlie Wicker thing. I have the directions, but what do you think I should put in here? That doesn't make sense. That 
doesn't make sense. Hmm. Okay. I think that's it. Ooh, what's this? I have no idea. Hmm. Baby teeth, adult teeth. What? Oh, the teeth books. There must be some instructions. So this is like five of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So yeah, it's the five and the eight books. But don't know which ones we need for now. So at least I got that. Calendar. Dead. Shiver parlor house. Dead. Chateau. Reset. Iridescent Pearl and West Bank. May 31st? That's today. Scuttled Bones, Rampart and Domain. What is that? On this day, November 1952, the Jolly Roger crew of New Orleans hereby invites Dr. Bruno Sinclair Bollet to join his hall its hallowed ranks. Speak of this to no one save the man who has championed you and will should you accept this invitation serve as your sponsor during the initiation process dr gilbert buford huh hmm. those letters might be important the red ones so i'll take a picture hmm Bruno, as usual, a good time was had by all. Your friend and fellow Jolly Roger Gilbert. So it's... It's a group. That, like, it's a, a club that they're all in. Short Stories for Tired Eyes by Bruno. <coughs> Dedicated to those who hear the whispers. Oh, I got some sneezing power powder. Whew. Steps in the right direction, the key to the statues. Statues are the key. Plentiful pirates and nautical nonsense. Time will tell, part one. At exactly midday, the teacher said to his class, what time will it be when three hours have passed? Let's pretend it's that time and move ahead two hours more. And from there, let's say that it's nine hours before. If six hours before then we made note of the time, what time would it be if we moved ahead nine? Oh my God. Students wrote down six numbers in all, then went back to their daydreams of things big and small. At high noon, the sheriff stepped into the street and addressed Batman Bart. Five hours ago, I told you to leave town and you swore you'd be gone in three. There's a reason why you're still here. I left right when I said I would, Bart exclaimed, but just as I was riding out, my horse threw a shoe. I took him straight to the blacksmith, but he was real busy. Said it would be five hours till he finished with my horse. Better tell him to get a move on, the sheriff drawled. Because two hours from now, if you're still here, you're going to be real sorry, understand? Bard understood. He went back to the blacksmith and an hour later was on his way out of town. It was midnight on a dark and stormy night. Only four hours before, I had seen my dear friend Hollis who informed me he was leaving for the court of the Star Chamber in a mere two hours and feared he would never return. I realized that six hours after he was to enter the chamber, I was to surrender myself to Court Blackburn. Count Blackburn. I had no way of knowing whether, after the usual five hours of interrogation, I would be able to keep my rendezvous with Lucretia two hours later. This must be for the clock, right? Count, let me leave, or would he... Would the Count let me leave, or would he imprison me forever? I was terrified. Librarian's tale. A great keeper of books, it's true, am I? May a reader through me can sp Many a reader through me can spy on wondrous worlds that will never die. You could say it's magic, the librarian's eye. But to get such an eye, you must first take a look at the cards that keep track of every book. The title's the thing, additions the hook, that will let you remove the orb from its nook. Oh, the the cards that we have in that little 
thingy. Oh, okay. Titles the thing, additions the hook. Okay. History of Quincy T. Booker's teeth. Filled upper right, second molar, extracted upper right, center. Oh, this must be for the books. Let me look at the picture with the teeth. So he says, filled upper right, second molar. Second, how do you say that? Bicus? Bicuspid? Cus cuspid? Is that molar? Oh no, first, second, and third molar is there as well. So upper right, second molar. Is that our right or the right side looking at someone's mouth? I think it's our right, right? <laughs> right? So if it's upper right, second molar, it has to be the second molar from the back on this side. So if that was, if it were the books, let me see. Second from the back on the right. Okay, that one. Extracted upper right central incisor. Upper right second incisor. Oh no, upper right central, central. This is so confusing to me. <laughs> Need to like check it 10 times. Then upper left central incisor. Upper left and Oh, two of the front teeth. You extracted two of the front teeth. Lower left lateral. So it's the second on the bottom. Okay, now I need to draw the bottom teeth because I haven't done that yet. Extracted lower right canine. So that's the third one from the middle. Lower left. I hope I'm doing this right. Extracted upper left first by, by cuspid. That is one, two, three, the fourth tooth from the middle. And then a lower left canine. Oh, canine, the third one, lower left. That one was right. I did that one wrong. So that's you and then you are number seven. Oh God. If this is correct, I will be surprised. Well. <laughs> what do you guys think of my teeth? <laughs> primary teeth history, permanent teeth history. Baby teeth and adult teeth. Permanent and primary. Okay, so that means one, two, and three are the baby. And then four to eight is adult. Okay. Got it. Steps in the right direction. In a place where bones are buried, so is something too that you seek. Start where Charlie Wicker sleeps. Okay. Tread lightly on grounds that sink and seeps. Charlie will give you directions, but count on my shovel to find the way. When you find the place, a monumental task awaits. Okay. So we need the shovel and the, the directions that I still have. Key to the statues. The statues are key. Avian statues hide secrets bound. Mechanical feathers from metal were pound. Wires and springs and levers were wound. As levers are pulled, solutions compound. A feather stands up, another falls down. You won't need to peek if you listen to sound. Inside this drawing, a solution is found. Master of buzzards drop, drops key to the ground. Okay, so there's levers there. And we need that as the solution. Got it. Plentiful pirates and nautical nonsense. Stealthily stalking them, famished and anxious. Out hunting west waters, he was can cantankerous. Out there, out here were the sea stricken pirates aplenty. A week's worth of looting left their large stomachs empty. <laughs> Funny thing about pirates, I was just looking up scurvy this morning. Just, I was just thinking of scurvy. Thinking of vitamin C. Down to the port, we'll plunder some dinner, but the truth is that these pirates could have been thinner. Their villainous vessel was bugged down by booty. They would drop off the treasure and away they'd be scooting. They would foul up the village and make a great mess. Down to the mangroves, they'd surely digress. Ah, it's a beastie. Swim for your lives. The calm sea's treachery left a surprise. A long-legged beastie whose eyes were aglow 
had spotted some treasure in the hold down below. And this curious nature would not let it go. So he tore down the hull and alarmed were the pirates. He started to break down the structure inside. His nautical naughty naughtiness, naughtiness knocked down the ship. Those petrified pirates were muddled and miffed. So they fired their guns at this grand octopus. At one leg, at two legs, at left legs, then six. But the creature continued with the two other arms. The northwestern water wailed in welled in with alarm. The pirates abandoned this nautical nonsense and swam right to shore with their rather large haunches. But gaggles of gunmen got left getting gobbled. The creature was angry in its own ink it bobbled. So down dove the octopus right to his den. He spit out their bones and fashioned a fence. And each treasure of course he had not left behind. He'd befriend all these baubles in very short time. And long lived this octopus hidden away, but his fate fell quite quickly on one fateful day. Hmm. Can we take this book? I think we have it. Yes. Okay. Thank God. Hey, eyeball. How are we going to get it? Can't we get it off? Grab it on the side. Oh, there. Oh. Gotcha. Oh, just clicked, clicked a lot. Okay, I think I finally looked at everything there. Wow, that was a lot. Um, I don't know how many eyeballs I need. Oh yeah, and this one you guys said just keep turning. Oh. Ooh. Gross. Wait, did I get the eyeball? I don't know if I got it. picture of an eyeball but nothing else hmm I wasn't even faced this time <laughs> the first time it really scared me <laughs> do you think there's an eyeball in here I feel like if we turn enough times it's gonna be an eyeball uh, same though didn't you get a weird coin I did you are right oh ah okay okay cool that's another one yeah how many do i have 10. how many pages were there in the book where is the book One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. I don't think we need all the spaces filled, I think. But yeah, maybe it's for later, that one. Uh, uh, how do we get out? Oh, there's two. Wait, but how? Oh. Ah. Ah, now we're here. I see. Okay. Let's do the teeth thing. Because that I think we can do. And I think we can maybe do the time, but I uh, there might be something we need to put in the top of the clock. Okay, baby teeth. Um, one, two, three, four. I don't know if this is correct. Five, 
six, seven, eight. This wasn't correct. I think because I messed up the baby teeth. I think the baby teeth ones are different. Filled upper right, second molar. So that's all the way in the back. Yeah, it's different. Okay. Upper right, central incisor. Okay, that's good. And then lower left lateral. That's the second one from the bottom. That's fine. I just messed up the first one. Okay, let's try it again. So one is that one. Two. Three. Four. That's a good sign. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Yay! God, that took so long to write down, but f I finally got it. <sighs> okay. So I got another eyeball. Let's look at the clock. Maybe we need to set a time and then click it. Okay, let's take some notes. This one is hard. Okay. At exactly midday, so noon, 12, the teacher said to his class, what time will it be when three hours have passed? So that would be 3 p.m. Move ahead two hours more, 5 p.m. And from there, let's say that it's nine hours before. Oh God. So 8 a.m. See, these are so hard. <laughs> Six hours before then, we'd made note of the time. What time would it be if we'd moved ahead nine? I don't know if like, do you think each paragraph is one time or each time it's mentioned is a step? They move to a new line and from there. So maybe that's like, so it is uh, five and then 8 a.m. 8 a.m. to 2 a.m. What time would it be if we'd moved ahead nine? Two and nine is 11 a.m. His students wrote down six numbers in all. Oh, there you go. Yeah, six. Okay, got it. Then went back to their daydreams, big and small. Part two. At high noon. Is high noon just 12? Five hours ago, I told you to leave town and you swore you'd be gone in three. <sighs> so... 7 a.m.? You swore you'd be gone in 3, 10 a.m. I left right when I said I would, but I just I was riding out my horse through a shoe. Took him straight to the blacksmith, but he was real busy. Said it would be five hours till he finished with my horse. So from 10, five hours, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. Is 3? 3 p.m.? Two hours from now, if you're still here, you're going to be real sorry. So... That would be 2 p.m. then, right? Because they're talking at high noon. Bart understood. He went back to the blacksmith and an hour later was on his way. So that is 1 p.m. Uh, part three. Okay. It was midnight on the dark. They all start at 12. <laughs> Midnight on a dark and stormy night. Only four hours before I had seen my dear friend Hollis. So 8 p.m. He was leaving for the court of the start chamber in a mere two hours. So he was leaving at 10 p.m. And feared he would never return. I realized that six hours after he was to enter the chamber, I was to surrender myself to Count Blackburn. Enter the chamber. So he went... He was planning to go to the chamber at 10 and six hours after that, so that's 4 a.m. At 4 a.m. he realized that he should surrender himself. I had no way of knowing whether after the usual five hours of interrogation I would be able to keep my rendezvous with Lucretia two hours later. Oh my god. He goes to see him 4 a.m. Five hours of inter interrogation. That makes it 9 a.m. And then Lucretia is two hours after that, so that would be 11 a.m. Oh my god, okay. Let's see. So, we start at 12. Then 3. 
then five, then eight, then two, and eleven. <gasps> Okay, so do we do part two now? 7 a.m., 10 a.m., 3 p.m., 2, 1. Oh, another one. How many eyeballs did this dude have? Okay, 12. Eight. 10. Four. Nine. 11. <laughs> yes. Clock puzzle done. All done. Can't check that off yet. All done. Find all of Bruno's glass eye. Figure out a way to get Henry to give me the glass eye that's on his keychain. I haven't done that. Do something with that token I found in the dunce Did that. head. Follow the clues that Bruno left on a piece of paper. Ask Renee if I can borrow the shovel. Pull the heads on those buzzard statues. Bruno saw fit to write a book. Maybe it would be a good idea to take another look around his library since that's where he kept the books he saw fit to read. I haven't done that. See if I can remove the glass eye from that perpetual motion machine. All done. Determine the significance of the tune I played on the jacket. Oh. Can't check that off yet. Oh. There's something to it. I was I thought there would be, because Okay, I need to go back then and write that down. Did that. Check. Yes. The books and the clock are finally gone. The garden isn't done yet. Still have to do no. that. Cool. Lots of progress. Look at that. Now let's go back. Oops. And write down the melody of that music box. C. 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 <laughs> D. E. 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 <laughs> D. C. D. E. C. Okay. C, 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 D, E, 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 D, C, D, E, C. We could try and play it on the spider hole. <laughs> that must be one of the weirder things I've said out of context, don't you think? The spider Hello, hole. Again. Did Dr. Bole ever say anything to you about a crystal skull? He may have referred to it as the Whisperer. No, he never so much as mentioned a crystal skull. Whispering or otherwise. Were you in the house when Dr. Bollet passed away? She was, away? according to I the doctor. Indeed. I was in the library cleaning when all of a sudden I heard a big thump. I hurried out to investigate and sure enough, there was Dr. Bollet lying by the front door. And as I rushed over to him, the door opened and in walked Gilbert Buford. He took one look at Dr. Bollet and hollered at me to call 911. So I ran back into the library and did just that. When mm -hmm. I came back out, Gilbert was leaning over Dr. Bollet, listening for breathing, I suppose. And then he started pushing up and okay. down on his chest. But it was too late. Even I could tell that Dr. Bollet was gone. Well, their story checks out. Um... How was it that Gilbert was able to just walk right in like that? Different story. Oh, I thought it was the same. People around here seldom lock their front doors during the day. But you know, in the back of my mind, I have always wondered about Gilbert Buford showing up at the door at that exact moment. Hmm. I understand that Dr. Bollet had some interesting pets, like an iguana. 
That man never met a creature he didn't like. He trained them to do all kinds of silly tricks, then let them run free inside the house as well as out. Do you know how he went about training them? I surely do not. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I like Dr. Bolet. I truly did. But I swear, sometimes his activities made as much sense to me as bathing in a bayou full of gators. Powder in the envelope. I was thinking the same thing. Like if there's poison on the the envelope when he holds it and then it is absorbed through his fingers, maybe? That shovel over there with the interesting handle, do you think I could borrow it? Dr. Bolet took great interest in that shovel. Don't know why. He never used it. Just like to see it hanging there. Me, I use it to dig up roots. Hmm. You mean like tree roots? No, I mean roots like tannus, black cohosh, valerian. Roots that in the right hands are very special, very powerful. Isn't valerian However, toxic? right now I need mushrooms. I was hoping to get them picked tonight, but from the looks of all this potting I still have to do... I'd be happy to pick them for you. Wow, what a generous offer. All right then, I need five painted conks. They're conks. mushrooms that have got a short, fat stem and a large bell-shaped cap covered with big red dots. Valerian you is You might calming. find one or two here in the garden, oh. but you'll have better luck in the boggy part of the cemetery. You get me five, no more, no less, and I'll let you borrow that shovel. Okay. Deal. Five mushrooms? You can put them in this bag. Thank you. How else may I be of service to you? Nice talking to you. I have seen definitely seen five, I think. Let's see. There's one right here. Somewhere. Oh, yeah, we can also do the heads. Uh, where have we seen them? There. How do I click on it? Ah. This has got to be a painted conk. Painted conk. <laughs> and I think... Wasn't there... Oh, I went the wrong way. I want to go... Wait, how am I... This way. I thought I remember seeing another one here, but... Yeah. Another painted conk. That's yeah. two... There was one here. Oh, I swear. Normal. Sometimes I f read something and forget it instantly, and then other times I'm like, "Oh yeah, that mushroom I saw four hours ago on this screen." It's ridiculous. Uh, okay, this way. There's one. That makes four. <gasps> oh my god! Run! Ah! Oh my god! You just gotta- Oh, you're so lucky. Wait, I'm not done yet. I need to go this way. Aha! I think that's fine. Did you pick me those mushrooms yet? I did. Sure did. Well, bless your heart, you did it. Actually, picking the one growing on the log sticking out of the swamp was a little hairy. A oh little? My. <laughs> I forgot to warn you about Bernie. Bernie? <laughs> if by Bernie you mean the alligator that almost had me for dinner, yeah, you did. He's another one of Dr. Bolet's pets. Okay. He'd kick that log to get Bernie's attention, then feed him marshmallows. Problem is, now that gator leaps up and snaps every time someone so much as touches that log. Hmm. I should have said something, but I've gotten so used to Bernie, I just plain forgot. Anyway, feel free to help yourself to that shovel. You earned it. There's no nice way you. you can Come feed a gator marshmallows. Uh, mushrooms. Okay, so now with the shovel... Okay, wait, let's do this first. Um, how do we pull at this?
Okay. Let me look at the picture. Okay, those two in the middle need to be up like that. And then these need to be short like this. And then these on the side need to be out. Good. So far, so good. That's too much. But let's just pull them all and see what happens. Oh, I think that's the sound of like... Going in and going out. So that was in and out, out and in. It seems like they either are back middle like this or fully up. So we need the middle to be up, the one next to that to be all the way back, and then these need to be middles. So here only this one changed. This one went from all the way flat to middle. So this one only moves the right one. Okay, so the second head only moves this one. Confusing. Okay, that moves a lot. No, did it? It moved this one? Let's move that one again. That was the third one, right? Oh, it didn't move it. Yeah, now it's not moving anything. Five and six were moved. These two. Okay, that's good. That's perfect. Three, four, five, five and six. Okay. Now, if I do this one once, that should be right. Okay, now just this one needs to go one, one in. Just the left one. Have we seen the one that just moved the left side? Uh huh. Just this one now. That should be it. What is that? I have no idea. Wait, what does it say actually? Inside the drawing, the solution is found. Master of buzzards drop key to the ground. So it's a key. Okay, that was that one. Now let's go to liquor. Here we are. So how... Ah, okay. Uh, west, north, and then east. That doesn't make any sense. Maybe this is the start? It says west, north, east. Maybe it's west, north, east? What's the number of fingers? Oh, it says four. One in that direction. Four in that direction. Two. 
zero. Wait, so I start here, right? So does it mean I need to go four west? One, two, oh yeah, it's counting down. Three, four. But then would it then be two west? That doesn't make any sense. Two, east, south, three, west. North, two, west, two, three, south, one, two, three, east, one, uh, north, one, two, East, one, north, one, two, three, east, one, two, three, four, south, one, two, three, four, five, west, one, two. Oh my god. Dig. <laughs> Jeez. That was hard. What's in it? Oh, you broke it. Uh oh. Ooh, god, all of these eyes are so creepy. Okay, finally did that bit. Be gone. Um. Ooh, these are all done except this one. Jack. Yes, we're done in the garden. Wow. Okay, the letter we haven't found. Secret study. I haven't done that. Oh yeah, we haven't done the eyeballs yet. Find all of the Can't eyes. Can't check that off yet. Glass eye on the keychain. Oh, yeah, we need to talk to Henry again. Follow the clues that Bruno behind the paper into Dummy's head. I haven't done that. Ha oh, we haven't? The last denizen buried on my guard will start you a hunting through the graveyard. What's written on the headstone will lead you to another, and so on and so on forth, till tiny treasure you discover. You need to look at the cemetery book for this one. Okay. Um. The shovel. Did that. Did that. that. Can't check okay. that off yet. Significance of the tune. Five painted Jack. mushrooms. Check. Do what the steps in the right direction story Jack. says. Find out in what position the feather is. Uh -huh. Did that. I haven't figured out what to do with the key Still yet. Still have to do that. Okay. I want to look at here. Nope. There. Okay. Oh, that's high C. Oh, okay. Oh, that's E. Shit. Okay, over it again. God, the spider is not there anymore. And done. Another puzzle bites the dust. Okay, cool. 
Um, that was the melody. All done. Nice. Let's talk to our emo guy. See how we can get the keychain. Yes? Do you think I could borrow your keychain? The one that has Bruno's glass eye on it? You want to borrow it? What for? Actually, all I really want is the eye. <laughs> I mean, it's just so cool. So cool. If you break it. I won't. I won't. I'll be really careful. I promise. I don't think I want to take that chance. Sorry. Mm. The box of your great uncle's things that you sold to the cures. It wasn't. No, no, it wasn't. How come your great uncle's crypt is in the garden and not in the cemetery? How come your great uncle's crypt is in the garden and not in the cemetery? Don't ask me. It's kind of weird. Apparently, he built the crypt himself, but he never indicated in his will or anywhere else that that's where he wanted to be buried. I stuck his ashes in there anyway and had the thing inscribed. If that's not what he wanted, too bad. Hmm. The box of your great uncle's things that you sold to Zeke's curio shop, that was a no-no, wasn't it? What box of things? I don't know what you're talking about. I checked out that half-burned receipt from Zeke's that I found in the fireplace. Well, somebody screwed up somewhere because I haven't sold anything to anybody. Why would I sell one lousy box of stuff when I'm about to inherit a whole house full of stuff? Get real. Get you real. You sold it because you needed some quick cash in order to keep Summer happy, didn't you? How do you know about her? Playing detective is actually a lot more than a hobby with me. <laughs> I'm nosy. I could make a lot of trouble for you, Henry. But if you come clean, tell me about Summer. She's this girl I'm in love with. No. I think she loves me back, but she's so unpredictable. It drives me nuts. If she is hounding you for money, I don't think she's in love with you. <laughs> you argue a lot? All the time. Mostly over how schizoid she is. I mean, I never know what's going to make her happy. Mm. Like, just before I left, I took practically every bit of cash I had and bought her a bunch of CDs. You know, to keep her occupied while I was gone, right? Well, soon as I get here, she calls and says her sound system just went bluey and I had to buy her a new one because what good were the CDs I bought her if she couldn't play them? So then I... So then you threw a bunch of Bruno's things into a box and sold it to that curio shop. Yeah. I wired her the money, but then she called and said her she also needed new headphones. Next call, it was new speakers. And now she expects me to buy her a flat screen TV. When I try to talk to her about always wanting more like that, she gets really mad. But I'm afraid if I don't give her what she wants, she'll... Dump you? Good riddance. Dump me. Yeah. I couldn't take that. I mean, she's the only girlfriend I've ever had. Ever will have, probably. Look, you don't need to go telling Renee or any of those lawyers about selling that stuff, right? I guess I could just forget all about it. Especially if you were to, say, do something for me. I know. You still want the glass eye? Mm -hmm. Take it. Go ahead. It's all yours. You want something, I want something, take it and we're even, okay? Well, it's not like you sold off half the estate or anything. 300 bucks. That's all I've gotten mm. out of his estate. I swear. Go on, take it. I will. I was naughty. But from now on, I was naughty. <laughs> Do you know anything about the crystal skull that was in the box of junk? Do you know anything about the crystal skull that was in that box of junk you sold to Zeke's? There wasn't any crystal skull in that box. Are you sure? It would have been inside another box. Well, I did throw in some smaller boxes. Like I said, I was just grabbing stuff. Was it valuable? All I really know for sure right now is that it's missing. Great. Be just my luck to have sold something that wasn't junk to that glorified trash collector. Hmm. I'll check back with you later. Awesome. Okay. Um, there was also something about a book that we already looked at. Oh yeah, here. This we also had to look into. So it said something like the title is the key. Plentiful, no. The librarian's tale. To get such an eye, you must first take a look at the cards that keep track of every book. The title's the thing, additions the hook that will let you remove the orb from its orb from its nook. 
Title's the thing, the addition's the hook. Title's the thing, addition is the hook. Cat's eye. Eye candy. There's a couple eye ones. Grinding fake eyes. Turn a blind the eye. Librarian's tale. Oh. Hmm. Something Bruno Bollet wrote in that tired eyes book mentioned the librarian's eye. Yeah. There's an eye here. 608. Cat's eye. 010. I don't know if this is what we need to do, but. Eye candy. Fake eyes. 006. Library's tail. Four oh one. That's it. So I have some codes, but where do we have those numbers? If you add all the I numbers, they should equal one of the high numbers. Ooh. 6401. 1540. Here? Oh. A librarian's tale. I didn't see that, no. Oh. Oh. Oh my god, okay. So it was 1540, okay. That must be this one. Check. Yeah. Um, paper in the dummy's head. That one I still don't know. That check. we did. Can't check that off yet. That was not done yet. We haven't seen uh, Iggy in a while. Okay, so the riddle. The last that has been buried on my guard. Oh, we'll start you a hunting through the graveyard, which written on the headstone will lead you to another, and so on and so forth. Still tiny treasure you discover. Ah, now I get yeah, that was what we was what we were looking at, the book. Okay, let me write down who is on the last page. Tammy. Tammy Tasselman. Let's go look. Back to the graveyard. Where is Terra Siesta? Is it like back right? Nope. Nope. Yes. So how do I... How do I progress? Or is it just in the book? Oh no. That looks like the right name. Okay. Ah. Ah, okay. Couldn't sleep without a peep, so when she died, we buried her deep. <laughs> That's a really scary thing to have on your gravestone. <laughs> um, okay, so wait. Oh, it continues. Couldn't sleep without a peep, so when she died, we buried her deep. Start your hunting through game, it's not head so will lead you to another. Can't sleep without a peep, so when she died, you're very deep. So that's a hint for someone else. So we find someone, get a new clue, and then have to go back to the book each time. Sleeping Meadow. Take a picture of the book since the name triggers it. Oh, yeah. One. Of all the pages? Oh my god. Is it something, like, obvious? Helps to read the names out loud. 
Hmm. Constant snoring. <laughs> Constant snoring. <laughs> that is so. Oh god, I would. If you guys hadn't, hadn't helped me with that, I would have never found out. Okay, Constance. That's gotta be it. Okay. I have pictures now. So, oh my god, this is gonna be so hard. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, this way. Let's go back in the rain. I like to think that she has like a big raincoat on. Okay. Never early, never late. Never early, never late. Let's see if I can find something. There's so many. Ah, just in time. Looks like the right name. Sorrow Park. Have we seen a Sorrow Park? I think so. Oh, found it. All dressed up with no place to go. <laughs> There's a person named Polly Esther. Me every night. <laughs> Christine Deirdre, Jean, Eddie Thomas. Some of them I'm just like, that's a name. Like I can't I can't think of like what it would sound like. Mirabel, Hesintha. There must be a weird one in there. Betty Barn Chaser. <laughs> Dolly Ray Dirt Creaser. Hey Evelyn. I'm in there. Ukulele. Oh, there's a ukulele. That definitely is one. Has to be. If it was Manny Kin, it would be perfect. That's true. If you're dressed up but you're not going anywhere, that's a very smart one. Donia, Katie, Tegan, Manny, Mannykin. There, I am no dummy. <laughs> I'm no dummy. Manny is in the Rithing Roots Memorial, and I've been there a couple times now, and no idea how I got there. Hey, <laughs> died in debt. Jesus. Ricky, Garrett. Oh, and more. There he is. Is it Owen Moore? Let's try. That looks like the right name. Sorrow Park. Here it is. A stand-up person. Kneel down. <laughs> Let's hope Neil is lying down by now. Okay. Crowing crypts. All that's left of me are these old bones. None of the other names that I've been reading have been standing out to me, though. Desire Longren is one. My remains. Oh. God, no. I wouldn't have, wouldn't have found that. Too hard. Bingo. Uh, we have to go back to Terra Siesta. Yes. Bloomed too late, pruned too early. Um, I definitely like the page hint. Could I get one of those again? Then I'll try and try and see if I can find it. Rose Winter Spring. Maybe that one. Smells right to me. Nice. Rose is in the Slumber Gardens. Okay, thank god. She would have given you the shirt off her back. Oh, polyester givens. <laughs> that can't be right. Oh, it's not Polly. Hopefully this will givens me a clue. So now what? What's written on the headstone will lead you to another and so on and so forth till tiny treasure you discover. So we need to go to polyester's grave. Uh, 40 Winks Mausoleum. I think it's this one? Yeah. Let's 
same name as my dog at 10, moved from his grave and buried again. Bruno? Same name as my dog, Bruno. My dog at 10. Is that also in the, the book? Someone named Bruno? Hello? Hi, Bess. How you doing? Great. I just took a nice, luxurious bubble bath and I'm ready to boogie. When mm -hmm. are you coming back here? That's still kind of hard to say, but listen. Remember that old photo of a boy and his dog you said you saw in that box of stuff Henry sold to Lamont? Yeah. Did it look like it was maybe taken in the 1920s? That's exactly what it looked like. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I need to find out the name of Bruno Bollet's dog. And if that boy was Bruno, then that was probably Oh, the boy dog. was Bruno. Was there any writing on the picture? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think it said Bruno. That's all it said? Just Bruno? No, it, it said Bruno and, but whatever came after and was hidden by the frame. I really need to know the name of that dog. Oh, no. No, you don't. No more snooping. Uh-uh. Bess, just get into that box again and see if the dog's name is on that picture. That's all I want you to do. How? I can't just go waltzing into Lamont's back room. And he's for sure as heck not going to fall for that sneeze contraption again. There must be some other way you can distract him. Please, Bess, I can't tell you how important this is. You've got to do this for me. Please. Uh, okay. Okay. We're not going to have any fun here until you solve this mystery, and since you can't do that until I do this... Okay, I'll sneak into the back room and take another look at that photo. I mean, I will if I don't screw up. Think positive, Bess. You're going to do fine. You bet I am. In fact, I'm not going to call you again until I have seen that picture. I'm going in. <laughs> you go, girl. <laughs> fun. Here we are again. <laughs> Doggy. Uh, let me just do this just in case. Doggy picture. There. Hey. You know, I still feel guilty about that sneezing thing. So Here we how go. about I go and get you a nice big bowl of gumbo? Just so happens I'm starving. So <laughs> hey, you got a deal. Great. I'll be right back. And that's how we get the hot sauce on there. I see. <laughs> hey, Willoughby. Willoughby. Can I get a gumbo to go, please? Eat up. And then that, and take it. Oh, he's not gonna like it. Oh, what if he's like perfect? He's completely fine. I like him spicy. That my gumbo? Mm hmm. There you go. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this poor guy. Uh oh. Oh, you're gonna have to excuse me. <laughs> like, you wouldn't taste how spicy it is. Quick! He still hasn't looked at the box. Uh oh. I better get out of here. Bruno and Grant. Oh god. Get out of here! I can't! I'm stuck! Grant? The oh. dog's name was Grant? That's Grant. what it said on the photo. Kind of a weird name for a dog, huh? Yeah, well, Bruno Bollet was kind of a weird guy. Hey, thanks a lot, Bess. You've been a huge help. He was quick. I'll tell you, <laughs> being sneaky takes a lot out of me. I'm exhausted. Oh, I still don't know when I'll get back there, so just kind of hang loose, okay? Story of my life. Call me if you need me. I will. Bye. Okay. Grant. Now, why did we need that? Oh, wait, yeah. Do we need to find a Grant then? Derek Grant. Ah, it's the second name. Okay. Ri ri Rising. You guys told me yesterday. Rising Roots Memorial. Thousand. Okay. Rising. Grant. Pirate. Nothing else? Hmm.
Jack. Okay. What do we do with that pirate hat? There we go. Iggy, you here? Wasn't there something else we could do here? Maybe not. Oh yeah, there was this as well. What is this? Bent above the pirate. Oh! Here, Iggy, Iggy, Iggy. I didn't even see that. Does he want the hat? Here, Iggy, Iggy, Iggy. Iggy, come here, Iggy. Got something for ya. Ah. We got that so long ago. <laughs> Do you want the hat? No? Oh. So wait, are we supposed to remember what he was wearing in the... Oh god, I don't remember. <laughs> That's definitely piratey. Is that it? That is piratey. <laughs> this is so weird. It's definitely the hat, though. Dress him like a pirate and then back up. Oh. Like that? Ah. Um. Okay, so we can just press anything. Dress Iggy up as an optometrist and see what he does. A mailman? Should we do that? But then I need to get two more fruit. The name that opens Ebery, Jolly Roger, meeting opens me. I feel like I have seen Jolly Roger somewhere. It was the club he was in with the doctor. Oh yeah. Good time was had by all your friend and fellow Jolly Roger Gilbert. Oh, okay, now I get it. So whatever they say to open up their meeting is the word that opens the box. Oh, the acceptance letter. Hello? I took a picture Hi, of that. Listen, you busy? Uh, why? I need you to do something for me. What? I need you to infiltrate the meeting of the Jolly Rogers crew that's about to be held Never in mind. Rampart and Dumaine, which has got to be right near Zeke's. You're gonna have to look around for it. Now to get into the meeting, you'll need to put on that skeleton man costume you saw in the back room. And once you're in the meeting, you'll need to listen for the name that opens the meeting so you can tell me what it is, okay? Mm. No. <laughs> yes, I know you don't like to do stuff like this, but this is really, really, really important. And it'll be the last thing I ask you to do, I promise. Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. I don't suppose it would do any good to point out that the curio shop is closed. You'll find a way in. Oh, and breaking into. The, the password is scuttled bones. Okay, I'll give it a shot. That's the scuttled spirit. bones. Damn, breaking in for your friend. Get lost. <laughs> Okay, so apparently the entrance is right here. How do I get into the place? Five digits. Do I have anything I can use? Oh, the powder! Oh, wait, the five has a little bit as well. So, one, two, three, four, that. Ah, I didn't see that there was something on the five.
There it is. Guess that's all good. Do you want anything else here? Alarm will sound. But that's what I just came in. Ooh, I don't trust it. Guess it's fine. What's the password? Password? Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, wasn't it Scuttle Bones? It's not in here. Scuttled boat. Forget it. Scroll down. Oh. I was like, yeah, that's not the answer. What's the password? Password? Right. There we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, scuttled bones. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's like, I don't trust you one bit, but okay. Better hurry. We're just about to start. Well, how do you open a meeting? John must meet. John must meet. John must meet. <laughs> Welcome, my fellow Jolly Rogers. Jean Lafitte. We have several pressing matters to discuss this evening, so let us begin. It's the, As the you shop may owner. Or may not have heard, certain city officials are attempting to deny us the right not only to gather in public places during the Mardi Gras season, but they have also seen fit to. Shoot, I forgot to turn off my cell phone. It seems mm -hmm. we have an uninvited guest. Get him! Who <gasps> growled like that? Oh. Go. You're making a big mistake. Let go of me. Look, I'm not here to make trouble. You're making a, a big deal out of nothing. Can we just talk about this? Where are you taking me? If you just let me explain. Uh oh. Why, it seems our trespasser is of the female variety. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look. <gasps> That's right. You know me and I know you, Dr. Buford. And I also oh, know it's that Dr. you were the one who attacked my friend over at the Bole Mansion today. And if you don't tell me why right now, I promise you, you are going to be in one big world of hurt. The young lady's clearly uh -huh. upset about something. Clarence, take over the meeting while I try to find out why she's making all these crazy accusations. <laughs> crazy They're not accusations. crazy, and you know it. I will tell you everything, Miss Marvin, in private. <laughs> and he did. He told me everything, Nancy. I bluffed him into confessing. You would have been so proud of me. Oh, and before I forget. The name they chanted at the start of the meeting was Jean Lafitte. Jean Lafitte. Great. Now, what did Dr. Buford tell you? Okay. First off, he said that with his dying breath, Bruno Bollet directed him to steal the painting of Henry's parents and lock it up in Henry's parents' crypt. Hmm. Bruno seemed to think that way Henry would wind up with the crystal skull instead of somebody else. So Dr. Buford dressed up in his skeleton man costume, stole the canvas, and hid it in the crypt like Bruno asked. That must have been when Renee saw Mr. Death. But then, Dr. Buford had second thoughts and decided to hack with Henry. He wanted that crystal skull for himself. So this afternoon, he dressed up in his skeleton man costume again and snuck into Henry's house so he hmm. could get the key from that mini cemetery and retrieve the painting he'd left in that crypt. Knowing the painting would somehow lead him to the skull. Only I walked in on him and ruined everything. Right. And now that we're on to him, he says he no longer wants the skull. Yeah, he right. He's embarrassed <laughs> that he allowed a superstitious side to get the best of him and says whoever finds the skull is welcome to it. At least that's what Dr. Buford said. Uh-oh. Uh-oh what? I told him you were looking for the skull. That's all right. Actually, I told him you were on the verge of finding it. Mm -hmm. Why would you tell him that? I don't know. I got carried away. So if he lied to me and he really does still want the skull, then he might come after you. He left right after we talked, and I don't think he went back into that meeting. What if he's on his way over there? Don't worry. I'll be fine. Why don't you just... 
Should be fine. I'm not too worried. Whoa, that bolt of lightning was huge. Anyway, why don't you just go relax and I'll be back at the hotel before you know it, okay? Bess? Hello? Huh? Bess, you there? Nope, she sure isn't. Well, the box. Uh, Jean Lafitte. Nice. Do you think the crystal skull is behind the eyeballs? Ooh, five to go. Okay. That was such an elaborate puzzle. Now we have this weird thing left. That's and this weird thing that we got from the cemetery fence. And the hand. Um, is there anything in the book we haven't done yet? Actually, I should just check this. First and foremost. There. I the letter. Maybe we should dress up Iggy again? Because he should have the letter, right? Okay, let's go get some more fruit then. Yeah, the weird thing was from the statues. The weird key we got on the right here. Uh, fruit. <laughs> oh, thank you. Can I do One it again? What's all I need right now. No, you need two, and you know it. What was it? A mailman? Iggy! And a oh, doctor? Iggy! <laughs> Here he comes! Mailman? Is this the mailman? That looks like a mailman, doesn't it? And a clown. We can also do a clown. There's a handsome mailman! Goodbye! <laughs> Ooh, is that the letter? Dear Dr. Bollet, I have completed my review for the, of the data I gleaned from the tests I ran last Tuesday on the crystal line replica of the human skull which you and Miss Amanda brought in. What follows is a simple answer regarding its authent authenticity, which the two of you requested. My analysis showed that the skull, while made of remarkably pure crystal, was carved using modern instruments. In layman's term, the skull is a fake. Again, thank you for allowing Milo research and technology to serve you. Ah, so it was a fake. Interesting. Hmm, mailman. Did that. Authenticator. Yeah? Is this Milo research and technology? This is Chaz, Milo. Service forwarded your call to my cell. What do you want? He's running. <laughs> Are you all right? I'm at the gym. I'm the treadmill. It's called multitasking. Well, about the I would never be able to. Bray, you know, where you told him the skull was a fake? I was just wondering... I never told him that. Never told him what? I told him that skull was authentic. No, you said in the oh. letter the skull was carved using modern instruments. I said all the tests I ran proved the skull had been hand carved and hand polished. Probably took decades to make. But the letter Dr. Bollet got said just the opposite. Oh. The letter he got must not have been the letter that I wrote. Are Someone you forged that it. Are crystal skull is real? Hey, I'm not saying it's magic or anything. I'm just saying it wasn't made using 19th century, 20th century. Or 21st century technology. Did you carbon date it to see how old it was? The thing was pure quartz. No carbon in quartz. No carbon, no oh. carbon dating. Hey, look, I'm gonna hang up now. If I try to talk anymore, I'm gonna pass out. Just one more question. Did you send that letter saying the skull was authentic to anyone else? No, just Dr. Bollet. I heard he died recently. Good thing I built him up front. Hmm. Yeah, well, thanks for your help. No problem. Oh, now the the housekeeper is really shady because she's the only one who was with him in this house, right? Oh, I need to go that way. So maybe she saw the letter before he did and replaced it? If 
very sus, yeah. Because who else would have gotten the letter if he only sent one letter this way? Yeah! Oh my god, stop! Oh my god, they're all just coming back. Stay down! Jesus, that was hard. <laughs> that was so hard. <laughs> um, okay. Nope, that's not the door. That's the door. Uh, then we go here, and then we go here. Then we go up the stairs, then we take a right. Then we go to the dummy. Okay. Iggy, how about a nice juicy loquat? There he comes. I think it was a clown, wasn't it? No? Oh, it was the doctor? Okay. <laughs> uh is it like that then? Hopefully. Hmm. Okay, great. All done. Check. Ooh, we're running out of things to check. Just that weird key still. And find all the eyes. The letter. Did that. What if someone not only replaced the letter with a fake, but also poisoned the letter? Like when he touches it, he dies. Um, four eyeballs to go. We still have the hand as well. This weird thing. These three are like the mystery right now. Hello again. I think I found the letter that Dr. Volet was reading when he had his fatal heart attack. Iggy the Iguana had taken it. Apparently, Dr. Volet did have a crystal skull and believed possessing it would make him immortal. So he had it tested, and the lab sent him its findings in this letter. Read the second paragraph. Mm -hmm. My analysis showed that the skull, while made of remarkably pure crystal, was carved using modern instruments. In layman's terms, the skull is a fake. My guess is Dr. Bollet believed in the skull so completely that when he read it was a fake, he was totally devastated and his heart just <laughs> stopped. But what I don't quite understand is, why did you tell me you didn't know about the crystal skull when this letter indicates you did? All right. Dr. Bollet told me about the skull. Mm -hmm. As you said, he believed with all his might owning that skull was the reason he was still going strong at 95. I lied to you because, well, for one thing, Dr. Bolet swore me to secrecy. And for another, he kept the skull hidden. And up until just this minute, I wanted to be the one who found it. Mm-hmm. What made Dr. Bolet decide to have the skull authenticated? Getting the skull tested was my idea. When Dr. Bolet told me about it, I was skeptical and that troubled him. So I helped him find a private laboratory where we could take it so any and all doubts would be dispelled once and for all. I certainly did not anticipate that the truth would result in his keeling over and dying <laughs> like that. Well, now that I too know that the skull's a fake, I can stop fretting over its whereabouts. In fact, I should probably thank you and Iggy for setting me straight. I feel like even if it's a fake, nice though, talking to you. it's probably Take still care, worth hon. a lot. Because it's still, like pretty carved quartz. I know quartz isn't that valuable, but the way it's carved probably makes it worth more. Call Ned. Let's see how he's doing. Hey, Nancy. How's it going? Pretty good. Meaning? Mm. I've been having Bess do some sleuthing for me. Kidding. I thought you said Bess was a disaster when it came to detective stuff. I never said that. 
I mean, I may have said she wasn't particularly adept at snooping. Ah, but this is not snooping. It's sleuthing. Sleuthing. Exactly. So how's she doing? You know Bess. When she puts her mind to something, there's no stopping her. She's doing awesome. Awesome? Okay, maybe not awesome, but she's certainly, uh, you know... She's doing great! Totally what are you talking up? about? Right. That's what I figured. Um... Are you familiar with the legend of the so-called Crystal Skulls? Is that where aliens supposedly scattered a bunch of perfectly formed crystal yes. skulls all around the world like thousands of years ago? And all the skulls have different magical powers? Something like that, yeah. Apparently, Henry's uncle was the proud owner of the Whisperer, the skull that was supposed to make whoever owned it live forever. Only now he's dead and another superstition bites the dust. Maybe, maybe not. See, this book I found in Bruno's library said no one who has owned the Whisperer has ever died of natural causes. So how did they die? They were <laughs> all murdered. Come on, you don't believe that crystal skull stuff is true, do you? Absolutely not. But right now, what I think doesn't matter. The people who knew Bruno had the skull, if one of them believed in the Whisperer's power, they may have figured the only way they'd ever be rid of Bruno was to cause his death. But didn't he die of a stroke or something? Heart attack. Heart attack. Well, there you go. Natural causes. Heart attacks can be induced. Mm -hmm. I've been watching too many of those forensic detective shows. That may be, but what's really interesting is the skull is missing. That is interesting. And I'll bet you anything that's what my bony friend in the red ascot was looking for. Does Henry know where the skull is? He doesn't know anything about it. At least, that's what he says. But if that skull is still around here, I intend to find it. I kind of figured that. I love with all the shit Nancy's been through. We're like on game 17 or something. She's been through the craziest shit. And she's like, maybe the heart attack was staged. And he's like, you're watching too many detective stories. It's like, come on, Ned. Jesus. She is all... <laughs> she has more than enough reasons to, to be suspicious. Henry confessed that he sold off some of Bruno's things because he needed money to keep his girlfriend Summer happy. She's high maintenance, huh? Extremely. You're so lucky. Hey, don't I know it. Think he sold off the crystal skull? I don't think so, no. He acts like he's never heard of the crystal skull. And so the search goes on. Bruno Bollet's doctor, Gilbert Buford, was apparently Bruno's best friend as well. Think Bruno told him about the skull? Yes, in fact, Dr. Buford told Bess that Bruno showed it to him once. But apparently he told Bruno the skull was bogus, and Bruno got a little ticked off. Never showed it to him again. Well, when it comes to murdering someone and making it look like a heart attack, a doctor's got to be right up there when it comes to suspects. Don't worry, I've been thinking the same thing. So what mm. else is going on? In order to find that crystal skull, it looks like I'm going to have to find all of Bruno's glass eyes. Bruno wore a glass eye? He wore a lot of glass eyes. Not all at once, of course, but from this box I found in his study, it looks like he had at least 25. What makes you think finding them will lead you to the skull? Something Bruno said to Professor Hotchkiss, whom I've met before, by the way, in Wisconsin. Did I ever tell oh, you yeah. about her? Why does that name bring boots to mind? For the cheese. Cheese. Anyway, it turns out she's an expert on the crystal skulls. So Bruno called her once. And when she asked him if he knew where the skull called the Whisperer was, he said, The, the eyes, eyes have it. He meant eyes with an E instead of an A. Right. Did he yes. lose all these eyes or hide them on purpose? <laughs> Do you I'm yes have sure it? He hid them on purpose. <laughs> and I thought Henry was weird. Get this. Bruno had a pet iguana that he liked to dress up in little costumes. Say what? <laughs> I kid you not. I found little <laughs> outfits for Iggy. That's the iguana's name, Iggy, in Bruno's study. He could dress him up like a mailman, an optometrist, or a pirate. Now I've heard everything. No, you haven't. Iggy also hides things in the vents. And depending on what outfit he's wearing, he'll go into the vent and bring out different stuff. You have got to be joking. Like, I dressed him up as an optometrist, and he brought me out a glass eye. Poor Henry. If weirdness is genetic, he doesn't stand a chance. I'm pretty sure a letter caused Bruno Bollet to have that heart attack. A letter? Apparently Bruno and Rene had recently taken the crystal skull to a lab to see if it was authentic. The lab guy mailed Bruno a letter summarizing his test results. 
which showed the skull was a fake. And when Bruno read it, I think the shock was just too much for him. So much for his being murdered. Actually, that's not quite true. When I called the lab guy, he said that in his letter, he told Bruno the skull was authentic. You mean someone faked the letter that said the skull was a fake? Yep, mm -hmm. which means Bruno more or less did die at someone else's hand. Good grief. Good grief. Have you told anyone? No, and I don't think I'm going to. For one thing, I don't want to tip my hand. For another thing, I don't want anyone thinking that skull is the real deal after all. Which apparently it is. The only thing those lab tests prove is that the skull is at least 300 years old. Not that it has magical powers or anything. But still, finding it would be pretty cool. While I was picking mushrooms for Renee, I almost lost my hand to one of Bruno's pets. You have a big dog or something? <laughs> a big alligator named Bernie. How can you make a pet out of an alligator? Apparently by exploiting their fondness for marshmallows. <laughs> Stay away from them. I like your hands just the way they are. <laughs> I can't quite figure out whether Renee neglected to tell me about him by accident or on purpose. Hmm. Hey, if you're not sure, you'd better stay away from her, too. Well, all caught up with him. Yeah, it's just that one key and I really have no idea. You have a key with a similar shape to the feathers? Do I? Wait, what? It doesn't look anything like that. Am I blind? What? I did not think that that was that same thing. Okay. It's the base of the key that has that silhouette. Okay, wait, does that make 25? <gasps> we have them all now. Oh my god. And finally. All done. Can't check that off yet. Let's see what's in there. Uh, ooh, that way. <laughs> Save. Oh yeah. Eyes. The eyes have it. Okay. So now it must be this story, right? So one to five. Stealthily stalking them, famished and anxious, out hunting west waters, he was cantankerous. The sea stricken pirates aplenty, weeks worth of looting left their large stomachs empty. Okay, wait, let me actually check. Oh, they can look forward up down right and left okay so they basically can look in any direction yeah west waters one to five we have west down the port we'll plunder some dinner port down the port yeah so six seven is down eight twelve down to the mangroves they surely digress or left a surprise I think it's probably left because we already had it down. 13, 16. Treasure in the hole down below. Break down the structures. Wait, thir 13, 14, 15, 16. So that's four things. Yeah, I only see three down. So I'll just leave it on down. Uh, 17, 20. Down the ship. Northwestern water wailed in with alarm. Right to shore. Down, right to his den. He spit out their bones and fashioned a fence. His treasure, of course, he had not left behind. He'd prevent all these bubbles a very short time. I'm guessing down, because he, he's going back down below, but... <sighs> That's a tricky one. Okay. Okay. 
It's weird to do that many that way. Oops. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So that's not correct. Okay, and that resets everything. Okay. Oh yeah, a week's worth of looting left. There is large stomachs empty. There's one direction for each eye and that's what I was just wondering, yeah. Okay, so there's... One, two, three, four, five, five things in there. So is it also down, left, up, and right, but also south, west, north, and east? He was, and that's another, okay. South, west, south. Out here were the sea stricken east. <sighs> okay, down, so south. Port is left. Oh, so you think down and port count? That's only six and seven, so we only need two for this one. Down to the port. Their villainous vessel was bugged down, so it could just be down. It could just be south, south. Okay, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So this is five again. They would foul up the village and make a great mess. Down to the mangroves, they'd surely digress. Ah, it's a beastie, East. Swim for your lives. The calm sea's treachery. That's East again. Left, a surprise. West, that's five. Okay. 13, 14, 15, 16. So we need four this time. Long-legged beastie, East again. Whose eyes were aglow. Had spotted some treasure in the hold down below South. And his curious nature could not let it go. Okay, so he tore down south the hull and alarmed were the pirates. He started to break down the structures inside it. Okay, so that should be that. 17, 18, 19, 20. So four again. His nautical naughtiness knocked down the ship. Those petrified pirates were muddled and miffed. Okay, I don't... Oh, down ship. Jesus. I almost missed that one. Nautical naughtiness knocked down the ship. So they fired their guns at this grand octopus. At one leg, at two legs, at left legs, then six. But the creature continued with two other arms. Northwest, northwestern water wailed in with alarm. I'm missing one. Left legs. Oh, yeah. Then just two pirates abandoned this nautical nonsense and swam right to the shore. So east. They're rather large haunches, but gaggles of gunmen got left getting gobbled. The creature was angry in its own ink. It bobbled. Left. Okay, and last one, 23, 24, 25. So down, south, dove the octopus right, east, to his den. He spit out their bones and fashioned a fence. And each treasure, of course, he had not left behind. He'd befriend all these baubles in very short time. Okay, south, west, south. East, west, south, south, north, south, east, east, west, east, south, 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 west, north, west. East, 
west, south, east, west. West! Ooh, I clicked too far. The eyeball in the hand? Oh, in the thing? Oh. This is some Indiana Jones stuff. Wait, but how do I combine them then? Hmm. Where would we have to put this? God, that was a hard one. The gargoyles? Oh, now we can put it in, you think? I really wish that they put something in where she's like, it seems like it fits, but I don't know what I would have to do here. And then just leaves it. Because then at least you know you're on the right track. Now it fits. I think there's an underground area. Whoa, what? Oh no, is it gonna catch the lightning? No way! <laughs> What on earth have you gone and done? The lid's closing and I don't know how to stop it. Here, I'll I pull thought she was up. evil. Toss what you're holding up here, then give me your hands. Come on, you best hurry. Oh here no. It comes. She's just gonna walk off with it. Renee, a little help, please? The crystal skull. After all that scheming, how do I finally get it? Why, this nice little Yankee girl Yankee just gave it to me. <laughs> Renee, help me. Hurry, please. Thank you, Nancy. Bye now. No, you've got to help me. Renee! We were right, so she must have forged Renee! the letter. I can't. Oh. Oh. Oh, God. Uh, oh, God. I need more time. I didn't see it. Where's the moon? Oh, there. Um. Okay. This is so hard. Huh. Wait, how did that lightning even reach down there? Okay. Escaped. Where did she go? Oh, foot tracks. Follow her! Boat engine. Oh god, where's the boat? Wait, why were there two... Wait! That was so confusing! 
this way. Renee, hold it right there. That's Kick the log. This ain't nothing of the fact that you just tried to bury me alive. The skull is mine. It wants to be mine. Kick the log. I did my share of scheming to get it. I got Dr. Bolet to go to the authenticators, then switched the letter they wrote saying it was real with one I wrote saying it was fake in hopes that Dr. Bolet would just hand it over to me. Yes, my plan failed, and yet, here we are. I have the skull. Why? Because it knows that I will fulfill its destiny. <laughs> Bruno Bolet wanted Henry to have it. That's why he had Gilbert Buford steal that painting and hide it in Henry's parents' crypt. Because he hoped that way Henry would eventually find it. Henry's a fool. If he ever got his hands on this, he would just turn around and give it to that trashy girlfriend of his. I would be worried Dr. that that's Bolet, what he does, he yeah. He wanted it because he was terrified of dying. Gilbert Buford too. And that Lamont fella, he just wants to sell it to the highest bidder. Me. My motives are pure. I, th I clicked already. I am going to protect it so it can rendezvous with all those other skulls. I'm gonna be right there when they start conversing and all the mysteries of the universe are forever sold. Marshmallows! <laughs> Is he gonna eat it? Ah! Dude, you're gonna die. No, no, you you no, cannot no, digest no. that. <laughs> Renee burst into tears and sobbed as Bernie swam away with a crystal skull. It made me feel sorry for her for about two seconds. After all, while she may not have meant to cause Bruno's death, she certainly meant to cause mine when she left me sealed up in that crypt. Mm -hmm. It felt good to turn her over to the police. <laughs> Later that night, Dr. Buford came over and apologized for knocking me out with that smoke bomb and for allowing himself to think, even for a moment, that Bruno's crystal skull was anything more than a pretty piece of quartz. To make up for his shameful behavior, he insisted on taking Bess and me on a grand tour of New Orleans. So no one actually knows that it's real. Someone who loves it as much as Dr. Buford was truly special. He invited Henry too, but Henry declined. He was oh, still trying Henry. to process the fact that his great uncle wanted him to have the skull. Henry always thought that to Bruno, he was nothing more than an annoying family obligation. Someone Bruno couldn't care less about. Yet Bruno's request of Dr. Buford, made with his dying breath, Prove that he did care about Henry. Apparently, and unfortunately for Henry, Bruno was the type of man who just couldn't bring himself to say such things out loud. As for Lamont, when he heard what happened, he closed his shop, bought enough marshmallows to fill a swamp boat, and has been scouring the bayous ever since, <laughs> kicking every log he comes to in hopes of finding Bernie and the crystal skull inside him. But Bernie has yet to turn up. <laughs> Maybe the skull didn't agree with him. Maybe swallowing it caused him to stop associating the sound of a kicked log with yummy sweet things. In Maybe he case, just spit it out again and it's in the bottom somewhere. Lost to the world once again, which is totally fine by me. How is that totally fine by you though? It's such an interesting, interesting historical thing. God. <sighs> Summer. Obvious enthusiasm for Kogo Kringle Bars. Oh, I haven't gone back to it. Never meeting a gumball you didn't like. For never missing an opportunity to talk to someone. Dummy dare is spending way too much time with the creepy dummy. <laughs> Solving the square marble puzzle in record time. Oh, I didn't do that. Egghead for finding an Easter egg basket case. Finding all three Easter eggs. There's three talk Easter about eggs? Talk detective's dream come true. The Italian police <laughs> called me personally and requested that I travel to Italy and help them what? stake out a suspected thief in Venice. Oh, Venice. Unfortunately, what started out as a simple assignment in a city filled with canals, gondolas, and romance quickly morphed into a full-fledged undercover operation. And I soon found myself trapped in a maze of lies, disguises, and danger. Help me find my way out by joining me in my next adventure. The Phantom, Phantom of, of Venice. Venice. Oh, I've heard of this one. Ah, that was fun. That was another good one.